welcome to the Inglorious Bards. I'm your humble game master, Tom, and this is Adventure 68. Uh, we are so glad to have you here. We have been really ramping up the campaign here as the heroes make their way through this chaotic and high stakes uh dangerous mess that is season three uh right now the heroes are dealing with the ever-present undead scorgernar they now have a uh, artifact out there affecting the world called the wavering sphere and then above it all in another realm trying to break through are the honor crin there is still a lot of threat out there for our heroes to deal with i want to thank you all for tuning in we are coming to you live on twitch.tv slash inglorious bards every Tuesday, 7.30 p.m. Come join us, uh, chat with us, say hello. You can also catch us on all the podcast platforms and the YouTube channel as well. All of that is on ingloriousbards.com, our website. And also a quick shout out to our latest uh, patron, Stephen Grice. Thank you so much for supporting the show. Every little bit helps. If you'd like to support us, uh, drop by patreon.com slash ingloriousbards, and we'd appreciate it. Let's go ahead and get going and see what's going to happen next in tonight's adventure and get a recap from Jeremy. <clears throat> So we started off resting inside the Nexus, which was well needed after all the back and forth that we've been going through and the towers and the Goliath, but we were able to kind of really place out where we were going to head next based on the information that we had. After some deliberation, we decided to actually use one of the Nexus points in the book that we had for Northern Varen and teleport ourselves to where we hoped was going to be right near Ethlian, which is the, the home of the, of the elves. Instead, we found ourselves on an island and uh, with some thunder in the background and we, we immediately using a Sildren sense as the elder druid. He has a, a sense that tells us exactly what direction we need to go. <clears throat> we started heading out east. Well, the thunder we heard in the background turns out was actually giants and we landed on their island and they were coming for us. They were walking right up into us. Polite grabbed her spectral boats and we all jumped into it. It was not fast enough, however. Well, it may have been if it weren't for the fact that we turned around to go see what the giants were up to. Again, Elder Druid, lots of ideas. When we found out that the entire giant's purpose was just to eat us, we decided that we had to get the heck out of Dodge. Before we could leave, the giant picked up the boats and started putting us towards its face with, to probably eat us like it said it would. And Piercy jumped out of the boat with his vorpal sword and on one shot the first roll of the game nat 20 and decapitated the entire giant just like that we were stunned and shocked but not nearly as shocked as we were to find that it regrew its head right after that and we were still in the thick of it but there was enough confusion that we were able to get away and not have to fight the second head while the first one was floating away with yarrow on top of it and we found our way into the forest. While we were working our way through, we actually were encountered by a bunch of treants, uh, giant tree people who were clearly guardians, uh, trying to stop us from getting further and did a great job at flinging Bali through the forest. Uh, Yaro did a great job catching him to make sure he didn't meet his demise way too early. Again, Sildren, speaking as the Elder Druid, was able to convince and coerce the uh, trance to walk us to the city of Ethlia, where we went and met these high elves, who were in this actually this underground, or at least under forest uh, city, which was really cool. Dim light, almost kind of a moonlight streaking through, uh, lots of people very quiet, very hidden away. And in the middle of the of the city of Ethlian, we found another tower, exactly what we were looking for. Uh, we were also encountered by the king, who was not happy to see us. He was not happy about the chaos that had been going on around the, uh, all of Varen. And uh, were it not for the elder druid, who was able to make his demand, we would have been kicked out with no, with no doubts. Instead, we were given access to the tower, as well as access to the sage who had said that he had been curing the tower of ghosts and spirits that had been affecting this place for almost a month. And uh, when we went to inquire some things about him, he told us that they left of their own, probably about two days before we even got there. Also, he told us that he had been helping out and had regretted terribly helping out the golden soldiers, the way he described them, and aiding them in putting a wavering sphere in the city of Corindel, which of course you know is in Azimir. 
And so we had to kind of put together uh, what we're going to be doing next. But before we left, we went into the tower because of the fact that the elder druid was able to dispel uh, the spell locking the doors with a natural 20 and just kind of rocked the room. And when we got in, Piercy's time to shine showed up because any riddle that appeared and anything that showed up, he was able to take care of and solve almost immediately. Even when uh, Palik got possessed by a spirit who then kept switching bodies out for, for everyone around. Uh, we were able to get that solved and finally made our way up to the top of the tower where there is a bunch of books. One of them we found out hurts us very badly and drained everybody. But Piercy finally grabbed one. And when he opened it on the table, a ghost appeared to speak with us. And that is literally where we left off, probably right before we all die. So it's going to be a short adventure, but get into it and uh, buckle up because we're getting ready to go. So with that, let the adventure begin. Our heroes are in the topmost level of the final tower, the eighth tower of Skordranar. There is a large stone table, a large chair, a book that looks to be filled with old worn out pages. And in this chair, a ghost has appeared, a spirit of a old human male, see-through, bluish in color, translucent. He has long ghostly hair hanging off, some formal looking ghostly robe, cloak clasped around his top. He looks a little groggy and looks around the room as he has somehow now just appeared through your machinations, messing with the books and such. And he looks around and says, and gives you the traditional Chaloran greeting of, Welcome, friends, Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra. <laughs> and he nods, <laughs> remaining seated. Um, it's a weird point of question. Xander can. I would have given you, Jeremy, two hero points if you had done another Star Trek Next Generation line from that episode. <laughs> I, I, I would just, have immediately. You should have just brought it out. Uh, uh, Darmok is ours wide. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. What was your question? Um, can Xander speak Chaloran? I know he can read it, but it's never been a spoken language. So does he understand? Yes. Like the cadence in, in, in casual. Okay. And uh, you can certainly do that. This guy is speaking in a language that connects to everyone. Oh, got it. Okay. Like common? Common, unless so we all there's it. a different Any language okay. you speak, some, it just rings true to you. Uh, okay, okay, okay. It's magic. <laughs> um, who wants to go? Uh, <laughs> He's the the, the diplomat up. says. This is kind of, <laughs> you're kind of a guy. Greetings. We are uh, efforts. We, we are defenders of Varen, and we are working to take down Scorgenar. We've been working with the Scorial Guild and doing everything we can to understand and follow the, uh, the Scorial Guild. Yes. Are you a member of the Scorial Guild? I am a founder. I am the founder. You, it, it's a pleasure to meet you. What's your name? I <laughs> cannot remember. I understand. And you are the defenders of the realm. Correct. And not just the realm. We hope to defend all of Varen. Scorgernar is coming back. And we have found your messages. We've been really focusing 
on making sure that we can stop him for good. Then, and then this must be some time ago. No, some time from now. Uh, how you how you remember uh, your name and uh, not not your name, but you remember. You can't even remember what I said. What you do? <laughs> <laughs> how, how long have you been here? I've been here. If what you say is true, and I can sense, Scordrenar, so you speak the truth, then I have been here for nigh a thousand years? No. Close. It's a long time. What are the chances he remembers what's supposed to be written on a wall somewhere? I was... One of the three original wizards. I was both creator of this chaos and provider of its solution. What's the solution? The solution is what you seek, yes? That's why you're here. You yeah. have been to other towers? Yeah, all of them. Words on the wall, it is what we seek. Words on the wall. He uh, rises from his seat, almost a throne, and glides over, looks at you, Xanner, and uh, goes over to Piercy and lightly touches you upon your fuzzy little cheek. Oh, that's a little ticklish. And then turns to the rest of you. What would you do with the message? Uh, uh, defend, defend the, the realm. And, and he s flies over to Polik. How would you defend the realm We're against... De destroy Scordrenar. And you have all the inform... You have plans. I'm confused. It's been a long time. We, we have information from seven other towers. Yes. I wrote this those. This is the eighth, yes. I figured. Do you have information from this tower to put the puzzle together? I do. I do. do you, can, will you share it with us? He looks you up and down. I can share someone who is noble and honorable nodding at you, Palik, and has an innocent heart and turns away from you, Palik. <laughs> I, I know. You just oh, oh, shit. screwed. My game's you over. Let's go. One, one person in our group. He looks at Bali. Bali's mm -hmm. shaking his head now. And I uh, no. motion towards Xanner. We've done a lot of things to get where we are but it's always been with good intent. Everything that we do is with a noble heart and mind. We know that Scorgenar is coming to bring death. We want to preserve life. He looks at you, looks at you closely. Make a will saving throw. <laughs> Sinner, minus one. Uh, it's, uh, is it regarding a spell? No. Just just flat will save? Yeah. Uh, 31. All right. He actually looks and gets a sense of who you are and says, you have, you have failed in some way. There is, there is something not so innocent or true about you. We all look at the leak. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a moral oh, STD. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Lost it recently, did you? <laughs> oh, oh. Does the bum bum count? <laughs> I told her to put it in my butthole. Um, if there is... I don't know if there's a way to atone 
or a way to prove what you're seeking for the pureness of heart. He floats over to Yaru and looks at you and touches your wrapped left hand. Uh, I am a keeper of this message, this final message that I can share with someone who has not strayed from his course and who is innocent in heart, and I do not see that. You will have to look further than upon me, spirit. I have failed more recently than anyone here, and my weakness put the realm in jeopardy. Look to the man with the hammer. Look to the stone father's servant. You know the stone father, yes? He looks at you, Bali. Does not approach you, though, but looks at you. I appreciate the vote of confidence, but uh, my rags are just as soiled as the rest of yours. Bali, you among us have hated the undead more than most. Doesn't make me a pure soul now, does it? But you have also shown that you can speak with the dead... And communi- so can Skodranar. But your words strike true. I he only like speaks that. in falsehood. I urge you to try now. Bolly stares at the spirit. All right. All right. Tell me what you see. <clears throat> he looks at you. Make a will saving throw. To essentially lie about the content of your soul. (laughs) Priest. (laughs) Never happened in history before. Um, For that, uh, 44. 44. Uh, Actually, uh, um, I'm affected by the drain, right? This would affect the same. Does it affect Will? 43. Okay, 43. Uh, You may project with confidence whatever you would like to project. Um, a, whatever lie you have chosen. Pass the rock. Spirit just pass the rock. <laughs> it's the moral uh, now. Presents uh, a willful priest of uh, a few years and just doing his best to uh, keep with his company. All right, make a deception roll 38. Oh, that's true. <laughs> deception. Uh, is it worth it? I'll spend a hero point. I rolled a 30. I rolled a two. Oh Ooh. my gosh. Okay. I can't do it. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me. I can't do it. I did it. I love it. And he glides over to the druid in your group. Uh, and you. Master Wizard, first, thank you for what you have done to protect and guard the realm. I'm in Secondly, I open myself to you freely, and I have made mistakes. I have erred, and I have killed those that should not have been killed. But I do seek the end of Scorgenar, all with me are dedicated wholeheartedly to that. I will show that to you freely and willingly, along with all errors and mistakes that I have made, uh, because I have done so in pursuit of a singular goal, which is that to end the threat that Scorchinar brings to Varen. And Sildren basically takes whatever will he has and hands it over to the creature to have away at his soul. <laughs> okay. Uh, he l- points across the room at Yaru and says, time will tell if you follow through on what this one says. And then glides away from you, children. Does not look at you and <laughs> goes to piercing. <laughs> Rejected <laughs> yet again. <laughs> He's intimating... Time will tell if Yaru follows through with what Pilgrim, Sildren said? Oh, that's what he said. Okay. okay. He glides over to you, Piercy. Um, Piercy 
Have how have you followed your path? Or are you as these tainted and unworthy? I uh I'm a, I'm a, just a, a swashbuckler. A serving the king and uh, doing my best. I don't know if I'm uh, the same as these. Uh, maybe not as good as these. I, I just uh, I'm trying to do the, the right thing. I don't know. He glides away from Piercy, looking, and it's a ghostly glide, heading back towards his book and chair, casts another look at Yaru, sits down at his book, and moves a page, of which a third is this torn, rotten page. The other two-thirds are an ethereal blue page that finishes it off. And he turns it and then grabs another little ghostly page and turns it, all within this old, rotten book on the table. Then he takes one page and moves his hand through it and collects the blue uh, page energy in his hand and then glides past Piercy, looks at Yaru again, and goes to the far side of the room where there is a stone uh, slab sticking out of the wall with some grooves in it. And he gently... Um, pours from his hand this blue energy into one of these grooves and then just like little bluey glitter stuff just fills the little groove and he motions for you, Piercy. Go ahead. Uh, All right, Piercy walks up. All right. And I sense you are true of heart, innocent and honorable. Uh, Thank you. What am I doing here? He says, you will need as much aid as I can give. And I can give this and the answer to your question. And he steps away from the slab and motions again for you to the slab. Oh, I, uh, I I touch it. Uh, What do I? You see, it's the blue stuff he's he's in. And there's, I think, three different cuts that were in there. Something like that. Um, well, well, the cut he has poured it into is sword shaped. Okay. Uh, Piercy reaches his, his little paw, uh, at the hilt of this sword shaped blue energy. All right. And. Tries to grab whatever's there. Your hand goes right through it as though it's not there. I, I don't think it's for me. Uh, Your Honor, uh, uh, Malige, uh, <laughs> sir. Um, uh, maybe, maybe I'll try uh, uh, one more thing. And he takes his short sword out. Okay. And he places it in the blue. All right. Nothing happens. Okay. I just, uh, I, I don't know what, what, what you want me to do. You have asked for a question, then. You take your sword out. The blue is now covering your blade. Permanently. Oh. It is now infused with a dull bluish light that slightly twinkles. Okay. Oh, uh, oh, oh. He, like, shakes it. <laughs> Uh, you got your blue stuff on my sword. Uh, is this, is this a, you, you mean for this to happen? What was your question? Um, the message, the message. <laughs> Piercy, she's the short sword. You sheathed the sword. Piercy does not necessarily know this, but you, Tim, have now gained a permanent plus six fire damage to your weapon. Wow. Whoa. That's massive. <laughs> Seth is angry that it wasn't. <laughs> All right. Extremely jealous. Oh yeah. Um. Yes. Uh. What? The last one. The last uh, message of the tower. You have it. The final message. Message number eight, if I recall. And he thinks, and he thinks, no. Oh God. <laughs> it seems as though someone has erased one of the messages and it's thrown everything askew. <laughs> no, he says, um, yes, yes, the final message. 
who are you? And he sits back down at his uh, desk, speaks to you, Piercy, but everyone else can obviously hear, and says, Message 8 is break the final seal to awaken the silent fate once all is in place. Search behind this seal to find the answer weaved throughout the world. Destroy the right answer, and the silent fate will be contained for a brief moment, and a brief moment may be all you have to send him back to his slumber. Destroy the wrong answer, and your fate is sealed. Okay, so uh, let me read it back to you. (laughs) (laughs) Message number eight. Break the final seal. This one I do not have printed out, sorry. Break the final seal to awaken the silent fate. I'm going to paste this in our text chat for everyone watching us on Twitch and the care. Break the final seal to awaken the silent fate once all is in place. Search behind this seal. To find the answer weaved throughout the world. Search behind this seal to find the answer weaved throughout the world. To find this answer? Search behind the seal to find the answer weaved throughout the world. Good. Destroy the right answer. And the silent fate will be contained for a brief moment. Destroy the right answer. And the silent fate will be contained for a brief moment. Destroy the right answer and the silent fate will be contained for a brief moment. And a brief moment may be all you have. The whole time he's saying this, Yara's just going, la, 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 la. <laughs> and a brief moment may be all you have to send him back to his slumber. This is what, two or three times longer than any other message? Uh-huh. Yeah, the perfect one not to print out. Yeah, perfect. <clears throat> Maybe all you have to send him back to, to his, his slumber. slumber. Last sentence, destroy the wrong answer and your fate is sealed. One last time, break the final seal to awaken the silent fate once all is in place. Search behind this seal to find the answer weaved throughout the world. Destroy the right answer, and the silent fate will be contained for a brief moment, and a brief moment may be all you have to send him back to his slumber. Destroy the wrong answer, and your fate is sealed. Um, thank you. Is part one. Part two. <laughs> part one of ten. <laughs> and if you are able to complete your quest, then then it is I, or at least what I am now, and those who live within Varen who will be thanking you, little one. I really hope that we do it right. We don't let you down. We've tried so long to get this information and and to get it done. And the world is in such peril right now. The world is in more peril than you may know. And he concentrates and concentrates with his eyes closed. There are dead, dead at the doors of the dwarves but unable to get through. Dead that push back against riders on horses who fall back. Dead halted 
by orcs and dead who have claimed a kingdom of snow and march onwards. And more dead and more dead. Hundreds, thousands surrounding Skordrenar now in his slumber. I have no path for you to take. Beat me to the question. <laughs> How do we get around the dead? Above them. <clears throat> Do you know the exact location of the resting place of Scorgenar? It is in the northeast of the continent, on a city on the bay. It was a dangerous place. There were protections, and Scorgenar has brought his own allies enemies to your cause that are there with him now. Is there a way to get there that would be safer from the undead that we must face? I do not know. Do you have an army? We have us. Maybe, maybe we can uh, uh, ask a few favors. He raises an eyebrow, thinking he was speaking in any language that anyone could understand. <laughs> <laughs> thinking that he could understand any language? <laughs> <God, I knew laughs> Wait, hold on, what? My magic is failing! <laughs> doesn't know Lower Isoki. <laughs> We may be able to gain an army. <laughs> He's just sitting there looking at you. I, I, I thought if we had an army, maybe you would give it. But, won't work. but it's fine. It's fine. Um, Yaru will say in this sort of hushed voice, because he, he noticed that he looked at him a couple times. Um, perhaps it is not getting there that is the issue, but Darmok, is that your name? It might be. Perhaps in part. Do you know, you seem to know much of the guild, but what of Skorgenar himself can you tell us? Perhaps he looks uncomfortable this kind of hazy, gentle, or even curious look about his face now. He looks in furrowed brows, and he's looking down at his table. We have met many beings and creatures, some would say gods, among our journey. One in particular, a great sentinel of the past, told us a story of a young warrior given a great power. I wish to know more about that warrior so that we can take the power from him that he stole. I cannot speak of that. You, you will, you will find more. You will do more. I have done too much. What does that mean? He doesn't respond. We have what we came for. Do we have any, though I doubt he may answer them, does anyone have final questions to try to get answered? This, uh, final, the final scene, is, uh, is that the where the Skarinar, he's, uh, where he's laying? Skordrenar rests somewhere in the northeast of Varen, on a bay with a city 
Right, right. <laughs> yes. Uh, a veil in the seal is uh, is there too. Yes. That's a good. You you asked if we had an army. What if the answer was yes? Then you have a chance to get there. What are the other two shapes on the ground? One of them was a sword. That was where on the uh, slab on the Sl- wall. The slab, uh, one is a chain kind of a thing. Another one looks like a rod, like a magic wizard rod. Then we will take our leave. The spirit then lifts his head up again and says, May Lomtriel watch over you. Your fate is the fate of all. A wind kicks up out of nowhere, and he quickly flies very alarmingly fast through his table straight to Yaru, leans into your ear and whispers something, and whispers and whispers some more. Yaru nods, and then he flies away back to his chair, and then he fades away. Okay. (laughs) Okay. We will all soon be interested to know what you learned, Yaru, but (laughs) let us... Including Yaru. (laughs) (laughs) Let us depart from here. (laughs) And Secret I believe. Chili recipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm getting a very. Um, In the sixth sense, Bruce like, Willis. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm getting a Will Ferrell. Your man like, dies. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you sit on a throne. <laughs> He's the gnome single. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we leave. Okay. And I'm. Uh, yeah, so we leave. <laughs> yeah, you guys <laughs> leave. You walk down some flights of stairs. You head out of the eighth tower of Scorgenar, where you are underneath the ground in this canopied, uh, wooded canopied elven city of Ethlien. There are about a dozen uh, high elf warriors, several of which, several of which look wounded um, or hurt. I can't quite remember why, but you guys were doing things. I do. Uh, it is from mishandling a book. The book, the drained effect, uh, yeah. went out. Yes, a couple of them look a little, a little bedraggled. This is uh... <clears throat> how many? How many of the guardsmen are there? Twelve. There are twelve guardsmen. We are done with our business here at the tower. A mage should seal this to the best of their abilities and continue to watch over it. One of the guards nods and says, uh, I will speak with the king and it will be done. Can't you seal it? Or no, one of you can. Polly. Was it Polly? I I can dispel it. I can't seal it. Oh, you want it closed. Yeah, you should probably Mm -hmm. close it. Oh, easy. And... And it locks and seals. What are you casting? Permanently. Uh, lock at level two. <laughs> well, Permanently. Well, it's it's <laughs> lock at level two. <laughs> until <laughs> level four, and then, like, like, comes along. After Polly yeah. walks away, have looks... your mages work on that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's unlimited duration for all intents and purposes. It's locked. All you right. can't open it. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to... Have a ninth level lock spell on me? What the hell? Fox only keep the. That's why I was talking to them. <laughs> Except only, only in Bobby's heart. <laughs> <laughs> was that Tim? Fox only keep the honest people yeah. out. Yep. Exactly. Um, would a place like this have a druid? Club? Hold on, I have to make permanent campaign notes that there's a level two lock on this door. <laughs> That'll be there forever, uh, forever. Uh, uh. And it's got Bali and blinking. Neon pattern. <laughs> First adventure of Bally. season four is you guys unlocking this <laughs> yeah, with ease. Absolutely. <laughs> well, it just swings Fine. wide open. No locks for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I barely touched it in an open. Does, oh, it pushes in. We were, we were pulling the whole time. Does Ethlian have a druid grove? Um, No. 
Um, now they do. They will. <laughs> Where those tree ants at? <laughs> Sildren would like to make contact with the king again. All right. You uh, are able, you are guided by some of the guards to see King Ulrindar. And he sees you upon his throne, this uh, handsome king uh, in his uh, robe, and sees you and says, your work here is done. We have completed our task, High King. We have got what we needed from the tower, and I urge... Ask him. Ask him if he has an army. <laughs> ask, I, ask him if he's going to finish that. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> I urge your mages to reseal the tower to the best of their ability. and We can't. There's a level two lock there. <laughs> 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 and uh, we all want to add something to that uh, so bad. Yeah, I, I, saw, I saw Tim think about it. I saw Tom think about yeah, it twice. Totally. <laughs> we just couldn't think of it. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> I wish to create a grove for you here in Ethlian. Tell me where the best place for it would be. He said, and what is this grove's purpose? To party army. <laughs> <laughs> it is to bring Keth's blessing to Ethlian. He says, I will give you the king's garden then. And you see two of his counselors nearby just balk at that and kind of look at each other. That is exceptional and unnecessary, good king. A secluded, out-of-the-way spot would be ideal for the grove that I have in mind. For the arm. <laughs> he says, I will have one of my scouts uh, select such a spot and guide you there. And then you will be on your way. And we will. And we thank you for your aid. And we are most gracious. And we thank you for visiting us. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> and Sildren, you know, gives whatever's an appropriate. No, 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 no. He holds out a can that says tips on it and shakes it on you. <laughs> All right. Um, Can you make a, a diplomacy roll? For that last bow type thing? Your, your, your flail? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, sure. So diplomacy will be 32. All right. He nods appropriately, but still has a bit of a sneer upon his face. Understandable. All right. A little young. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Sildren goes with the scout. Yeah, a scout escorts you guys out of this beautiful city underneath this canopy. Again, it's this underground valley with this rooted ceiling above it all. You uh, are escorted out. This couple scouts take you through the woods. You ask in the general direction you were headed anyways, and uh, about a mile or two away from the city, uh, they find a very beautiful, old growth, thick, uh, lots of moss, almost cozy type environment of old trees, uh, and the air seems a little heavy and a little misty. Okay. Um, Sildren takes some time and it circles around what the, uh, the perimeter of the grove is going to be speaking blessings of Keth to, you know, to all of the trees, blessing them, asking them to bless Ethlian. Um, travels around and then slowly starts a spiral circle in the whole way, blessing everything along the way until he hits the center. Okay. Uh, at the center, he pulls out um, a feather that has, um, its shaft has been dipped in gold and bears arcane runes along it. Um, and he takes the feather and he places it in the ground. It's a black feather, um, covers it, uh, speaks a blessing to Keth, <laughs> and stands back as a large oak tree begins to grow mm. and grow and grow and grow, uh, reaching 40 feet and five foot width at the trunk. And once it is completed, 
Sildren will again circle the tree bless with blessings of Kef. And then um, he turns to the elves that are there. Tend and take care of this growth, and the blessing of Keth will be on Ethlian. Be well, and be brave. So, you know, that's how you add something to the permanent campaign lock. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you just make sure level two lock is in there. <laughs> the level two tree. Uh, and what was that item that you used? That was a feather token that I picked up long, long, long ago. Long, long yeah. ago um which is a consumable magic item that when activated uh on an unoccupied patch of earth transforms into an oak tree 60 feet tall with a five foot wide trunk the tree continues to live and grow as uh, if conditions are favorable and um yeah and it was actually two feathers because one of those was yathanes oh so. nice. all right so they don't actually have a blessing at all you just made a tree and then, like, Shh. keep the tree <laughs> the way to escape a king that wanted to kill the other druid. Don't tell them that. <laughs> All right, cool. Done. Uh, Bleak would have liked to have snuck away before all that. She doesn't give a butt <clears throat> damn about any of that. Okay. Um, but uh, gonna the, go when we walked into the city, you described, like, um, the clothes as, like, super amazing mm -hmm. so she wants to do uh some shopping and buy some fabric just for things she has in mind to create later on all right you come across a elven clothing type not much, so much of a store but more of just goods that are on display as there is no sense of uh, money that's being exchanged okay. there's a man there who says you seek some cloth and you. I have fine, fine uh, material for whatever your purpose is. And he shows you great, uh, amazing, magical cloth, gorgeous cloth, uh, different colors. Uh, he has one that he actually names a color. And as he unrolls it from the spool, it changes into the color that he asks for. Um, he says, what is it that you seek? Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm kind of a, a budding... Um seamstress i want i want to make a friend um, um an article of clothing i would uh ideally like some silver trim and uh um the most pristine white fabric that uh you have he give he calls out white and pulls out some extremely fancy white club uh, cloth of some type that's no it's almost silky pulls it out and you said you wanted a silver trim around it the white though also has a little bit of a silver sheen if it that's catches good. the light just right uh, and he gets uh, gets a whole bunch and then rebolts it for you and then in one hand one heavy hand holds it over and says i give this to you and then extends his other hand uh pleek will drop 30 gold into his hand. Uh, he lets that slip through his fingers. <laughs> Ooh. This isn't going to go over well, I don't think, but I'm going to try it anyways. Um, she has some antique silver cutlery. Antique? Oh, yeah. Silver cutlery it's what we call plunder uh, in the business <laughs> stole it antique from the silver tower it's still attached to the diners <laughs> he takes the antique silver cutlery yeah he takes that i overpaid for this shit that was locked. worth 2200 gold I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, he definitely takes it not less for the value, but just more. It's beautiful and aged. From a ranking member of the Scoriel Guild set is what I have as a note mm -hmm. for that. Wow. And it cuts through cans like tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> and then tomatoes. And she stuffed, bleak stuffs this down in her bag of holding. You've got some really fine elven cloth. Nice. Sildren has a grove, and you guys are going where? Doing what? Are we in the grove? Or are we... Uh, is the grove saying? isn't for non-druids, so no. You're not invited. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, I mean, yeah. Well, I, I, I didn't know if you meant that's where we would set up camp as well, or if we were setting up camp. I don't think we're. I think we're departing as the yeah. uh, elf king would really like us to just leave. So if I'd, uh, about that army, the elves are not the place where we can expect that army. If anything, we have to deal with the wavering sphere and then seek an army. And S- Caliv- Calivier and Navarre are our best bets. Time it's is gonna quite take limited. Time. Oh, Gonna take a time to get an army. And no army will be forthcoming or be able to be gathered until that wavering sphere is destroyed. <sighs> so where are we going and how do we get there? Xanner, I remember in stories you have told us of before we joined you. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Chris. <laughs> of a cave with three faces. That was really long time ago, but yeah, it was just north of Bottom Hill in, um, just north of Edlin Home. It's, it's near where I lived and where kind of the Defenders got started. And that is, if that is what the blind sage spoke of, that will take us to Corindel and to the Wavering Sphere. Right. So we got to get back to Edlin Home, which is a ways from where we are right now. We can return to the Nexus Point in Raven. Is it in Raven's End? It wasn't in Raven's it's End. On it was, it's on Yeah. No, on, on the island. island. Yeah. Uh, the one that we went to is on the island, right? With the giants? Yeah. Yes. That Unless we know of a closer rep- one. That would require repairing our boat. Repairing our boat getting past giants who may just be sitting about waiting for us anyway. Where was the other nexus point here in the north, Xana? I haven't been to it exactly. Um, When I was reading through, I was mostly kind of feeling out where things were. And one of them was in a basement. I, I remember I was I was in that was one of the first places I ever went. I came out and I was in kind of a cellar area and it was it was humid and it was dusty, but I didn't look around. I didn't see much of everything that was there. And then the last one we just went to, we felt our way through that one and I could hear the thunder. I didn't know it was giants. I don't have a specific way that I know of that I can navigate right to where that nexus point is. We just go back to the other way. We can come to, come at the island from a different way. We can for sure, and the boat is still sailable. Yeah. It's just we have to avoid further damage to it, I believe. Um, I. So I would say that we head to back to the nexus point we came through to the nexus, and then the shortest path to Edlin home. Well, let's get moving. Is it Call wor- your tree friends. They can walk us back. Is it mm, worth talking? They have departed. Is it worth talking to the king before we destroy the sphere to let him know of what we intend to do? The king of uh, Mascon. No. He's going to have some bullshit uh, errand yeah. for us. I think <laughs> the wavering sphere is preventing the kingdoms and the rulers of those kingdoms from being able to build a defense, to being able to strike back at Skorjanar. Any effort spent trying to rally them before the sphere is destroyed, I do not believe will be fruitful or be worth the time spent as their hearts will be weak and they will be unwilling or unable to rise to that challenge because they are all affected by that item and it must be destroyed first. And then we gather what we can on the way. There are other paths to score Janar besides at the head of an army. Yeah, we're not gonna get an army. 
half this realm thinks we caused all these problems. And the other half knows it. <laughs> <laughs> we could only shorten our trip, perhaps, by magic, meaning the two of you have the form of dragons. And we all, at this point, almost all of us possess the power of flight. How long does dragon form last? One minute. Yeah, that's not how it gets for. Oh, no. No. All right, let's get to moving. Doesn't... So when Piercy starts dredging west. Cloud spell or something? Correct. I do. It's not memorized and it's a ritual, so. Oh, uh, I mean. Why'd that... you look at me that way? I didn't. A, Tom, I, a I ritual to travel how fast and what? Mm -hmm. uh, well, what is the ritual and how fast would it make us? Well, I would need to spend the night learning it to start. And then after that, let Piercy me. Piercy got about 100 up. yards. I think I set up a camp right here is, for this, tonight. <laughs> this is a little bit Alistair, a little bit Yaru, but uh, it would yeah. be like a two and a half day journey from Mirskan to Edlinholm, right? Or like a, two, a day and a half or something like that? From Mirskan to Edlinholm? It's like three days or so, this journey that we're trying to, so we have to go uh, back to the island. It was three days when we went down the river? Right, because cause no, I think it was a day and a half down the river, day and, a half? Okay. and then maybe three days to Tabernary. Okay. So you're looking at four, four to five days. Right. So, yeah, Yara is kind of going through all that as we're talking. Like it would be about four days just to get there. So if we're going to go, whatever we do, we must do it urgently. I'm only asking of our magical forms to see if it would be faster. Indeed. Um, Piercy's got a tent set up. <laughs> Piercy, we are traveling till dark. Join us. And we... Uh, you guys will meet him by the time you're done, yeah. is what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> While we're traveling... I don't um, even remember what, uh, what spell I had used there before. Xander's kind of checking in on his Nexus key. Okay. Is there any particular attunement to this key that he has where he can... Uh, here's Here's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to... See if there's a way yeah, that I can, can use faster. it as a dowsing rod, hmm. essentially, to locate where Nexus points may be around, or if there, if it even can point in a direction, maybe like a compass. Is uh, that a thing that's possible? It is not entirely possible, but you are level 17 with a hell of a lot of arcane knowledge. What you yeah. can do is you can expend any and all, which I don't know if there are any, any and all remaining charges within your Nexus key. We know how rare that is. Yeah. And then roll a 20 on a 20-sided die, and then you will have some effect. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't have any charges in the key that I know. Then, not the quill. then no. Okay. Then just roll the die. Because he said any and all. So. <laughs> no, that's what I mean, from the quill. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, so it, I, I'm pretty sure the quill okay. was, was used. Right. Never mind. But the key itself is just a key. That yep. Just, it, it has its one purpose. Just want to make sure. How long will it take us to get to the coast? From here? Yes. To the west coast of... Um, there. The island. To the nexus point? Well, yeah, basically to get back to the nexus point, how long is that going to take us? You guys were a day and a half traveling through the... No, about two days traveling through the woods with the trees help. Okay. Um, I guess I will have so, one of the elves. Um, I will need a scout to guide us out of the woods. All right. What? What are you? There are quicker paths than I may be able to find through these woods. You should have some a little more confidence in yourself. I may be able to find the best paths, but I. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> That's but saying it. Don't you always the elves know, which know them you through are? and through? Yeah, and these woods the are forest, not designed sure. to be friendly to strangers. Yeah, what are see. you talking about? We made friends on the way in here. Speak You're welcome. Not gonna Speak for yourself, <laughs> lady. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> well, yeah. Since everyone is uh, here, uh, Bali begins to cast a uh, moment of renewal. To start healing people? Uh, to start healing people. And I believe it will take away the drain effect as well, right? It will. Oh, handy. How, how big is moment of renewal? What level? Uh, moment of renewal Level is two. Is level two. <laughs> It's just moment of renewal. It's, yeah. uh, it's level eight. <laughs> the minute of renewal is level eight. Well. Level eight. That makes more sense. Okay. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. And then you are immune for a day. Yeah, that's really powerful. That's perfect. Just what it's used for. All right. You are able to get an elven scout to guide you guys out west. Uh, and Sildren, make a survival roll plus four. 
da, 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 da. survival 20, 38, 39, 43. With a 43. Nope. 44. With a 44, the scout is able to help pick paths and... Am I basically guiding the scout? <laughs> <laughs> he's able to pick paths and essentially you two are just kind of working together. You're going this way. And he's nodding. He's like, no, 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 around these rocks. And you guys were able to make a faster way there. It takes you just a day to get through the woods. Uh, amazingly, you didn't th it should not even be mathematically possible to cover that at the rate of you guys uh, trotting and jogging. Um, you camp at some point, finally catching up to Piercy 100 feet away. Uh -huh. And <laughs> uh, you camp just uh, outside of the ocean. You're still within the woods, but you can hear the ocean and you guys uh, camp there for the night resting. Um, Xander then loses his second drained level. Yay! <clears throat> you guys get all your hit points back. In addition, <clears throat> excuse me, the scout passes along some information about currents uh, and the uh, island and says, when you travel, head north more along this coast and then sharp west and then head down. He gives you some different uh, ways that the waters flow faster, as he says. And during the night, I'm assuming you guys have watch. Um, when Bali's turn is up for the watch, you do hear not too far away extra loud creaking of branches. <laughs> Everyone is uh, out cold? Yes. Uh, who's closest to me? Palik. Palik? Uh, Bali kicks a stone at Palik. I've got company. Ooh. Um, sword. With my dwarven eyes, I'm peering into the darkness to try and... All right, both of you make a perception roll. <clears throat> And Palik takes off her blanket on top of her, and Sander makes a grunt. Yeah. 32. 34. Uh, Palik, you don't see much of anything, neither do you, Bali. I swore I heard something. Yeah, maybe I'll stay up with you, though. I'm going to go check it out. Oh, yeah? Or it could be anything. It's not a giant because it fits in the bushes. It's probably one of our okay. tree friends. I don't like having them around. They're nice, though. I know they threw you, but they did help us out. Yeah, I don't like it. Bolly unsheaths, unties his warhammer okay. and marches over to the shrubs. All right. A giant branchy hand comes Gah! swinging out from the outside of your camp. Make a reflex save. 38, Bolly. I'm not good at this. I'm definitely not good at this. Uh, uh, 32. All right. And grabs upon Bali and crushes you ever so gently for two zero twenty 20 points of bludgeoning damage and lifts you up into the air, moving you more towards the central area of the camp. Billy wakes Sildren up. All right. God, can't breathe. Let me down. Once Sildren catches on to what's happening, um, I assume this is a treant? You see it is a treant, and you see Bali suspended 10 feet off the ground in the center, and then you see Bali being cocked back <laughs> off by the hand. Treant holds. I command you being a shrub. as Elder Druid of Rend Holt. Oh, throw me! I don't want to hear this nonsense! <laughs> Just fucking do it. <laughs> Just do it, honey. Put me out of my misery. I'd rather talk to the ghost. Um, yeah. Tell him to hold. That's your yes. elder druid. All right. Hold. Make a diplomacy roll and add plus four. Your target number is the same, 38. There might be some dwarf tossing in our future. Uh, 28. What? 20. Wow. 28. Yeah, because I have a plus 20. I rolled a four. So plus so four that was more of you stamp. I'm the elder <laughs> druid. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm still like shaking sleep out of my eyes. He's so. dreaming. I'm the elder druid. Um, he doesn't have pants Mr. Tree, on don't, <laughs> don't throw him. You threw him once already. And Bali is thrown. I am no tree. <laughs> <laughs> you hear the snapping of many branches yeah, and curses oh. off in the distance. He's like the cat that looks at you before he paws something off the table. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have to follow us for? Well, the branch is more fall. like a catapult. Okay. He had no choice. He just yeah. had to. <laughs> Sildren casts Featherfall. You take no damage upon impact, but you are thrown very far. <laughs> 
but how much damage do I take on re-entry? You, you go through a bunch of branches, take five more punts, points of bludgeoning damage from branches, and then you're out over the ocean and skip three different times oh, across the water before you come to a halt with taking no damage. On land? No, 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 on the ocean. He's feather falls. So he's... Skip. I, skip. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how to help you there. Uh, Polik will follow in the direction that he was thrown. It and is... the treant just steps back just outside your camp and sits <laughs> down a little bit. <laughs> My work here is done. I told you he's a cat. <laughs> Bali, you are in he's the walking. water. <laughs> you are currently treading water and um, struggling badly with a warhammer in your hand. Uh, I, I put the warhammer away and uh, try to swim. Actually, I have to begin casting a spell. Okay. How far away am I from the shoreline? Um, I can see in the dark, mm-hmm. 60 feet. Uh, I'd say 150 yards. From Jeez. which shoreline? <laughs> yeah. That's a good question. There's, so there's this place called the Thousand Isles. Uh. <laughs> uh, Bali begins casting uh, his Water spell. God, I hope I have it memorized. Okay. Is that not memorized? Um, I have air walk. Little Star Trek. I will cast that. Going to cast air walk. <laughs> All right, Bali, you are barely able to say stay above the surface of the water. You're a little overloaded. Uh, with your weapon, so you need to make a concentration roll, just a flat five or higher, or fail before you roll. Before before you roll, uh, you need a flat five or higher to cast a spell, or you can let the strap off of your warhammer and let it sink to the bottom, and then you don't have to make the concentration roll. Uh, the the warhammer is is my focus, or is it my robe that is the uh, it can be, or you've got holy prayer beads. It can be many different things. Many different things. Symbol around your neck. But what is it now? Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't normally have you with your warhammer out during battle. Yeah, it's it's generally not out. Yeah. Um, is the prominence of the warhammer important to any uh, aspect of my god? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's a fine answer. I will make the five or higher. All right. He's holding it aloft and praying at the same time. Here we go. A nine. Okay. <laughs> you were able to cast air walk. And air walk. Palik, you were doing something? Uh, I was going to walk to the shore, throw the boat out, and go after him. Okay. Uh, Bali, you cast Airwalk, and you are able to... I don't know how physically that works. You pull yourself out to the top of the water (laughs) and then start walking? I don't know. I'm not confined to the surface. I can walk up and over the water and then keep walking. Uh, As you do so... stumbling up and rolling around. Uh, As you do so, you see your cutter craft. You're uh, with some ghostly sailors being led by Captain Polik coming your way as well. Oh, I'm saved. Yeah, heck yeah, you are. You gonna come aboard or you gonna just walk on the water oh, all night? Yeah. <laughs> You're here already. Yeah. I'm I'm I mean, I'm I'm tickled. I'm tickled. I'm not aboard. thrilled about being wet, and I'm seriously constant contemplating arson. No, don't <laughs> don't no. not not on the boat. No, no, no. That branchy thing over oh, there. Oh, I know. Has it in for the dwarves. It's probably true. Good thing is uh, we don't have to come back ever. I don't want to be back now. Well, can we just go? You want to leave ever, everybody else? Uh, can we do that? I mean, we can go. <laughs> We've got the boat. It might take us a while to find the nexus point. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. No, I'd never hear the end of it. I know. This whiny. Well, I'm appreciative. Of course. But I'm not happy. And uh, I'm going to wake everyone up. I yeah, think everybody's woken up. Bolly's, Bolly's you screamed a little. 
<laughs> Bolly makes sure everyone is awake when he Bolly, as you make your way off, <laughs> off of the water towards the forest, Southern's you see... got his eye on the tree ant and ready to like waggle a finger at him. Oh, and I grab like a log of fire. <laughs> no, no, no. You're on the ocean. Oh, I'm on the ocean. Uh, your camp is maybe back. another hundred right. yards within. Yeah, the we gotta like line. flip the boat around. And... So you see, as you're walking across, uh, with on the boat heading back towards the so- shore, you see in the windless night, moonlit night, uh, one of the trees on the edge of the forest moving a little bit as you uh, get your boat closer in. There's more of them. You see it? I do. How about out for me? Maybe you don't talk to him. I didn't say a word. Well, you approached him. Maybe you scared him. You're pretty... You're pretty How do you scare a tree? <laughs> Look at you. You ever seen in a mirror? You're scary. You say the sweetest things. Well, I'm uh, I'm not keen with staying here. I'm not going to well, be around this and that stay on the boat. thing. We can stay on the boat. Sildren will find us. We could we could keep the boat a little ways off so they have to swim to us too. And 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 you wouldn't be the only one that's wet. All right. I'm fine with staying on the boat then. Uh, and we'll do that that 100 yards away. All right. Staying off the boat. You We get a little closer, like 50 yards away off the coast. All right. Just be a dick. Uh, um <laughs> you get some rest, make both of you fortitude saving throws, 33 or gain the fatigued condition. 33? 33, 42, please. <laughs> I'm keeping that. Natural one. 34. Okay. Uh, Bali, you gain, uh, we will say, fatigued two. You just keep watching that same tree. Did it move? <laughs> it, it, and the rest of the group, what do you guys do? Anything unusual getting your rest? Just resting unless it's Yaru never stirs. <laughs> he just keeps kneading on piercing. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, like just... chicken, I like liver. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just switching out a couple spots. Uh, All right, spell, it is the is next good. day. You guys head out west and find Palik and Bali on a boat 50 yards out. Bring that puppy a little closer, why don't you? Should we? I'm not Should going near it. Up? Not intentionally. Well, well, let's go pick up. You shoo your branches away. Shoo. <laughs> shoo. Oh, uh, we'll, we'll <laughs> Do I have a fire? Can, can searing light affect living tree? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Don't. I think so. Don't do it. Are these night sure. ants? It would. We're already going to Because there's fire damage yeah. involved. That, uh, if you bring down with. that elven forest, they are going to be pissed. Well, more than they. They stop throwing their guests about. This would be something like that. All right. Bolly bites his beard. <laughs> the group I, get... Yes? I just can see effect of the wavering sphere every day. <laughs> <laughs> Becomes more and more obvious now that you're aware of it, I'm also, huh? I'm also grumpy with the... Uh, the F2 here, the fatigue too. F2. Um, you guys board the boat, you follow the elf yeah, scout's directions, and you cross the channel relatively quickly and are on this uh, moor with thick, rich, saturated green grass and a few pale rocks sticking out of it, some rolling hills. You know, somewhere in the middle of this aisle is the nexus point to get back home. And you're heading that way. As you do so, you can see some tall humanoid shapes off in the distance. Um, Are they on the shore of that island? They're on the island itself, in the rough vicinity of the Nexus Point. Not directly on it, though. Do they look proportionally... They're giants. Are they giants? (laughs) (laughs) They might be giants. (laughs) Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. 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 Uh, stealth roll, um, but we all roll it and we take the highest nice, roll. Nice. I'm going to. I don't know if it's that's just how that works. Be quiet at us the whole time. I think it was different. What's it called again? Quiet <laughs> allies. 
Alliant allies. Um, blah, 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 blah. You are skilled at moving the group. When you're avoiding notice, your ally, you and those allies can roll a single stealth check using the lowest, the lowest modifier, modifier. But we all get to roll it. So. Instead of rolling separately. Yeah. But so you don't... So one we person don't rolls. all roll it? No. Well, that's a stupid feat, then. The, the, the concept is... If you still all had plus two mathematically, one would still f fail most likely. So this chains, changes six different rolls into a single roll at the lowest modifier. I'm gonna do you one better. I'm just gonna, for this one, this is an easier stealth experience overall. Just make one stealth roll for yourself for the whole group. I'm gonna use a hero pointer <laughs> roll oh, no. four. <laughs> it'd still be a pretty good roll but don't like, don't roll yet don't roll yet this uh, will be your reroll just a second so this Palik is having you guys make your way and you go over to some rocks and stop and you go over to another little shrub and then you stop and you little ding 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 you go over to the next area and stop and then off in the distance there's some thundering steps of a giant and then go 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 and you guys go until one giant stops and turns as you're all racing towards this small little nexus point and he looks in your direction and we'll see how good Palik is Forty-eight. Forty-eight. Wow. wow. And That's a mediocre roll too. Yeah. Wow. That's why they want you to use the lowest modifiers. <laughs> <laughs> and Palik is able to guide you guys. Stop, 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 go, 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 go. And you are all able to race to the nexus point. Xanar or any of you can touch your key to it, and you are all transported back to the Nexus, a place without a real location within this world where it is your home. You're within this library with rooms and storage and all below you, and you're back safe. <sighs> Bali takes the book for Northern Vren and throws in the fire. <laughs> there is a window, right? <laughs> Pounce it off the glass. Well, it's worth a shot. Piercy pulls out his sword and just kind of checks it out. He may looking to see if that blue sheen is still on it. It is still there. Um, also, you guys had an, a day of total travel, additional travel there on the boat. Um, and moving, uh, so gain uh, a fatigue loss for everyone. One fatigue loss. Oof. Shoot. Uh, no, must, must no. Forward to the to the benefit, there. Jerry. Oh, Lose those who have yeah. fatigue. Uh, yeah. He's just so <laughs> used to taking conditions. <laughs> <laughs> Another one. <laughs> just shuffle three <laughs> cars and give yourself. <laughs> uh, what time of? It's like afternoonish. You're in the Nexus. It has no time relevance. What time was it when we left? On the clock that says New York, London, <laughs> yeah, Berlin, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 11 what span. What time was it when we entered the next? Uh, it was It was late morning. Yeah. There was no sense. It's piddling about here, right? We have no reason to stay. We should get going right away. Yeah. We're going to take the river or should we? There's should a shorter we... path. Take me oh. to the river. Come, let us all go outside. So you guys all go out the front gonna door. There's going to be some asshole out there. <laughs> <laughs> you guys go out the front door of the Nexus. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, you Is step out. Is there a back out. door? <laughs> 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 it says for fire you Ask so Xander. much. Yeah. Um, you step out of the front door and walk out onto the top of a three-story boarding house within the city of Mirskan. Uh, and you guys just come out of this door out of nowhere. You step out, you close the door, and it, nothing can be seen. Uh, the, the entrance, the nexus disappears. You are standing there. You see there is a uh, city guard sitting <laughs> on this little widow's walk area on the top of this boarding house. And he uh, gets up with a startle uh, and... Um, uh, comes over quickly, too quickly, slips on a little bit of the roofing and then stands up and comes over. Sildren, you were doing something? Uh, well, I'm I'm going to wait now right. because this is going to take a couple minutes for me to do my thing. Oh, so. okay. Halt! Don't go! On order of the city of Mirskan, you... What is it? Uh, you are uh, the defenders, Yes. Yes. Maybe. Yes, and I take his like pen and paper. Here you go. 
Uh, I have been told if you ever appear, then I'm supposed to make sure you report to the king um, immediately. I told Where's you. the king at? I don't know. We okay. Do we not... know where he's That's at? That's two gold, children. I, I told you. Yeah, we yeah. Know, uh, we you know did. the way. You did. And he hands it to you. We'll, we'll go see King Feyon. Uh, since I'm on duty, I'm supposed to escort you. When well, you don't know where he's at. You know the way? Why don't you just stay here? No, I have to go. We'll wait for the defenders, and we'll go see <laughs> <Yeah>. the kick. <laughs> We're the You're Avengers. on guard duty. How can you leave your post? My post is to find you and take you. But uh, you don't know where he is. He's, you know where he's, you said you know? I don't know where he's at. We don't have time for this. So when you find yeah, Fayon, are we you going tell him or that not? you found us... And you come back here and I'm tell I'm going to go get the king. Thank you. Okay. And he runs off, slips, and then runs off. <laughs> we should probably, before we leave. No. Okay. I um, asked you this very question, <laughs> man. <laughs> um, so, Soder, <laughs> go ahead. P- Piercy, do you need to see your king? I, I would like to see the king. I assume so. I'm always talking to you. So we must... We cannot commit to anything. I do not believe. No, that. <laughs> no. Are you sure? No side missions this time. Just, uh, uh, He's uh, give kind me, of crazy right now. Give me, no offense. Give me about uh, three hours. Uh, then we've also That's got the undead that will be. Yeah, see, the last time days. you talked to Feyon, you told him you would down a gutter kill on the side of the a building. dragon. He doesn't, he doesn't even have to. He can just he wait. Just, yeah. and just <laughs> fall off. He can. And he, the last thing he says, "You told him you'd kill a dragon." We should all go and join Piercy at this point, um, and Sodrin will follow Piercy. You can jump off. This is bullshit. Yoru yeah. goes with you. <laughs> fall. Everyone going? P- Piercy's yeah. on, Piercy's Sounds on his like way, it. whether people come with him or yeah. not. So I, mean, so, I mean, Sodrin's going with Piercy. because He's on his way. All right. You guys are arriving at the Castle of the Storm here in Mirskan. There is uh, two, two guards who you've never seen before that are guarding the front gate. No one else. There are very few guards here. You also don't see a lot of people on the streets either. And these guards look pretty darn old. And as you're standing there, one of them says, uh, Halt! What is your business at the castle? I'm uh, Sir Percy Von Skeetenlever. I'm here to see the king. Uh, 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 thank you. It's so fine. And, and... He gets his halberd in the way of you. Oh, oh stop with that. And let us buy already. I need to know your business. You see what I'm wearing. Do you not recognize us, good sir? And then you hear, <laughs> Okay, um, they're here to see the king, and son, I brought them. <laughs> Which road did you take, kid? <laughs> it was a direct path. <laughs> there are signs everywhere. How did you not know where the castle is? It's MLK and Broadway, man. <laughs> Wally is just short enough of the halberd crossing. He just pushes the door. And <laughs> they don't even notice. <laughs> um, the uh, the older guards are confused by the younger guy, and they let you in. And the younger guard uh, quickly follows, and then quickly takes the lead. But he's having to go really fast with Piercy, uh, and he takes the lead. <laughs> They're both after you, not after me, not after you. Not after me. Oh, welcome to the Castle of the Storm. This is the famous painting of when I the grew queen- up here. It's a fine. Just go away. And... Yeah, we found that painting for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't have that if... That's me in that one. <laughs> you wouldn't have that if it wasn't for us. <laughs> uh, yeah, Piercy makes his way to the throne room. You go to the throne room. Uh, there is no one there. Okay. Um, he continues through the, oh the back, kind of the back side door behind the throne down to the planning room. You find the war room, and the king is there with a couple of military folks. And he turns around and says, Who did? It's you! My king! And Percy takes off his hat, takes a knee. He rises and says, It is good fortune to find you today. Uh, I don't have a lot of time, but I I, I, want, I need you to, to do something for us. Uh, we have something to do in the south but i need you i need you to prepare an army for us prepare an army 
<laughs> I need you. <laughs> There's a just joke a... on your lies. <laughs> There's a one shot of everyone in the room laughing at your spirit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my king, uh, we are on our way to, to do something uh, uh, super important. Uh, and uh, when we succeed, it will be the time for the armies to come together in Varen. And we need the preparation happening now. Sir Piercy, um, perhaps you are not aware, but the kingdom of Ivoron is no more. Not just uh, the Ivoron, not just uh, Navarre. An army has swarmed through Ivoron and is now making its way through our northern border. I have sent every able-bodied man and woman with every weapon we could find in storage up north. There is no army I can send. My king, I will give you the sign to look for. In the meantime, you need to let all the armies know. When the dead begin to turn around and head north, that's when you combine and you follow. And you meet us up there in the north. You meet us up in Palacia. Palacia? Yes. Sir Piercy. I this, don't have much time, Mickey. This is the part where I tell you that we need you for all reasons to go up north and defend our border, or we will fall. But... This is then, I assume, also the time where you say... I cannot, my king. And this will be the time, as much as I need you, that I will trust as you all have come through for us time and time again. Whatever we can do, we will do. But we are on our last leg here. I I understand, my, my king. I know... I know the battle's hard. Uh, we go into Azamir, and then we accomplish our task there. I think I think all the undead they go, they're gonna go up to Palacia. And when they do, follow. When they do, get all the armies together because we're gonna need all the help we can get. I hear you. We will do what we can and hope that these undead do turn, as you say. Send word to all the other armies. That will be done. And we will do our best to. Then may Soline watch over us all. Thank you, my king. May Soline. Watch over you all. He comes over and places a reassuring hand on your shoulder, Piercy, and that emboldens you a little bit and makes you a little happy, and you gain plus one to any rolls you make for the next week. Wow. All right. Pier of hard, flaming swords. <laughs> <laughs> Doing great, Piercy. Uh, doing great. <laughs> so Sildren takes He's the silver. <laughs> takes the group basically outside anywhere. It doesn't really matter. All five of you sit down in a circle and be quiet for ten minutes. Do I have a question? <laughs> <laughs> the time starts now. <laughs> what are you doing? Huh? I, I, I have to ask Piercy though. Uh, how do we expect a king to survive the onslaught of the dead with not but Four or five soldiers with halberds? I do not have that answer. You should tell him to leave. Castles can be rebuilt. If the, for his sake. The king, he, he left at one time. It took him 20 years to get back. Well, he, he was alive. He, he knows when the time will be to leave, and he... He knows he will return. I'll leave that up to him. If I still had my king, 
I would tell him to hide in the mountains. To abandon this place. This open sky. The dead coming from the north. If I still had my king. The Dwarven Halls would be a safe place. Even the caves would be a safe place. Safer than here. It's my opinion. If I may, Piercy. King Phaon spent a great deal of time hiding. Not being a king. I do not believe that is in him anymore. Though he is in the war room, not on the front lines. He is a fighter. He may be. And the time starts now. <laughs> to ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sildren's already been walking around. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Just resetting, a dull roar. Uh, resetting. Will do. resetting. <laughs> All right. What are you casting, Sildren? Uh, so I'm not. Sildren has been walking around. Everybody's in a circle, and he'll like wave his hand around each person's head for a few seconds. So Duck. Like, Duck. Duck. <laughs> Duck. Duck. <laughs> yeah, essentially. Um, and each time he does, you feel like a swirling wind, um, like wrapping around you, and then letting go, and then he goes to the next person. And each time, it gets just a little bit stronger, a little bit stronger, a little bit stronger, a little bit stronger. After ten minutes, um, he has cast the ritual spell, Windwalk. Uh, it's you and up to five creatures, so oh, that's, that's all perfect. of us. Uh, when you cast the spell, each target transforms into a vaguely cloud-like form and is picked up by a wind moving in the direction of your choice. You can change the wind's direction by using a single action, which has a concentration trait. The wind carries the targets at a speed of 20 miles per hour, and it lasts eight hours. So we are flying, going as Ooh. as the Athene flies, or would have, <laughs> um, straight to... Um, whatever, you know, as best as um, Xanner has been able to coordinate. So we're going to Bottom Hill? Yeah, essentially Bottom Hill. And okay. we're traveling Just in that direction for eight hours. <laughs> uh, just note, though, it does say the spell ends if any of the targets makes an attack, casts a spell, comes under attack, or gets sassy with the druid. <laughs> exactly. So it doesn't work Molly. on Polik, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, automatic. It takes 20 Polik minutes. is immune to Windwalk. <laughs> Turns into a bat, though, right? You're being <laughs> all of you turn into the cloud-like form and are whisked away by a wind controlled uh, by Sildren. No, how far <sighs> away? <laughs> how many miles is between Mirskon and and Corindale? That's uh, that's an interesting question. The legend is not on this map. We've always done everything kind of by foot and horse. Now About we're doing the same it... as Viric ish a little bit longer? Now we're doing it by that. Um, I only know like how long it's taken us to get places. So uh, by three. Shale's flight, it took us, what, eight hours a day almost to get to Iserun? That was a dragon flying? No. Wait, say that again for Shale? When we went with Shale from Mirskan to Iserun, that was a dragon flying, so like 100 miles an hour. Uh, or 100 feet, I should say. Uh, what, eight hours? It was something like the that. Yeah, maybe half a day evening. or something like that. Yeah. Because yeah. so, I remember it just being an evening. And so was... we could potentially get straight. 20 miles an hour is a lot faster than a dragon flight, though. Yeah. To Corindale? Well, right now we're going north, right? I'm asking if we should yeah, go yeah. straight to Corindale. Well, the problem well, is we're not... that that, pa go. that teleportation ring will take us to where we need to like actually go yeah. in Corindale. Okay, fair so, enough. My thought would be that was make... we're gonna, we just walk up okay. to the gate. Yeah, yeah right. and it so, may or may yeah. not take us to the right spot, but I think that's our best opportunity. Okay. I would, yeah, so this I is up to you, Tom, but I would give years. that like two hours, three hours or something. Um, yeah, I, I mean, yeah it's going to be super to home. By bird flight, about two or three hours. Yeah. All right, you guys go blowing out an open window of Castle Storm out across the city of Mirskan and are racing fast across the countryside of Navarre. And you're heading towards where, Sildren? Bottom Hill. Heading towards a location known as Bottom Hill from Adventure 1 or 2 in this entire campaign. Good, goody, and we will goody, take yes. our break there. We'll be back and see what they have to find uh, at their destination. 
you are flying through the air in this cloud form. There's a light rain that's raining down and you are heading northeast across the countryside of Navarre. You have adventured here long time ago in our early adventures of this season. Xanner knows this countryside as he has been here. Um, this is the area of the towns of Tavernry and Edlin Home, but you are going even slightly further north to the town of Bottom Hill. Which is at uh, the top of a hill, yeah, if I remember. <laughs> What's that? Which, is, which was at the top of a hill, if it, I remember. Yes, it was at the top of a hill. And as Jeremy <laughs> said, a town was probably way too harsh, <laughs> way too optimistic of a word. You fly over and you clouds uh, arrive over the grass there. And you can see there is the base of a tower of stone that has been constructed. And one of those walls has even crumbled away. There's a bunch of broken rocks. There are no farms of any kind to be seen here. You see no homes. You see there is a, a big indent of like a pit or a comet or something like that, uh, or something that has happened. There's a bunch of rubble and something. rocks, some of which look um, like they're bricks that are, were somehow underground that are now just pieces of rubble that are somehow appearing. Uh, there is a small fire, there is a lean-to, there is a donkey, and then there is a old man in this little depression pit of rubble. The, in the pit of depression. <laughs> 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 Right um, there with you, buddy. His name is Tim. <laughs> <laughs> so Xanner kind of taking points yeah. and, and noticing where we are. Uh, what are you doing with the donkey? <laughs> we'll let everyone know. That, like, show. Th this isn't exactly it. We have to go further to the, the chain tower or to the gate tower. And I, I started describing the cog tower that, that was up further to the north. Uh, can he? Can he talk? Yeah. Can Chris? Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it it that doesn't strictly prohibit it. It does not. You just can't make an attack, cast a spell, come under attack, or otherwise enter in counter mode. Yeah, you can do that. <clears throat> what is in counter okay. mode? Don't worry about it. Oh, okay. um, lead, lead the way. Yeah, but I can. I follow his directions and keep, keep so guiding us that way. If we're still cloud walking, Zane's going to float forward. All right, and talking clouds out of Futurama. Are... Uh -huh. <laughs> How's it going, old man? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to believe him. <laughs> Would you like me to like... make it rain? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, we head north and slightly west to go towards where the canyon is on the way to the tower that used to have the Master Gear labeling wow. in Xander's map. Uh, and find the caves, uh, uh, specifically the one cave with three faces carved into the side of the canyon. All right, Xander, you find said plateau over some flat fields. There is a plateau that then drops, and there is a crevasse, as I am seem to have many of in this campaign, I've been told. Uh, there's a crevasse there. It's a and, very crevasse campaign. Yes. And you flit through the crevasse and come across, and you can see off in the distance is a tall tower um, and further out on this plane, but you do not head there. You fly through this crevasse and see on the northern right hand side of this it are three faces carved into the stone itself. Um, they are partially covered in moss a little bit. The faces are contorted in pain, they look like. And the middlemost one has its mouth wide open in anguish, uh, which has a dark cavernous recess behind it. And it has just an eerie feel about it as you all arrive. But poor soul carved this. We've never known. We, we, it's, it's always been a bit of a mystery for me, but nothing I ever had a chance to come back to and take a look at. It was like a week ago since I was here. <laughs> I wouldn't even want to talk to the spirits here. It makes me feel uneasy. This was created by someone who wants anyone and everyone to keep away. I'll go first. <laughs> so do we, uh, As you will. 
It just went first last time. <laughs> Want to keep it going? <laughs> uh, Yaru, you are going through are walking. Are going to do any... Bl- um, right before he steps in, yeah. <laughs> Sildren casts Guidance on him, which will give a plus one. For one round. Yes. That's okay. like as he's getting ready to step in. Okay. So So you guys are all in your normal body forms, yes? Weapons yes. drawn? Yes. Normal body so, form. You're expecting a lot of trouble then. Perhaps. Oh, uh, it was it was really scary and dangerous at least, the last time we were here. At least cantrip level trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> Before I do, Xana, you have a very strange look on your face. What level were you? <laughs> <laughs> a whole week ago, level. I told oh, you. I was on 15 levels. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah um, if there's no further preparations, my plus one, I will kind of brace up and sort of you know slowly inch in all right and that's a plus one on his next roll within the next round uh correct okay Molly applies sanctuary to himself all right yaru you take a step in and as soon as you do there is a blast of a bit of wind coming from within and you hear this terrible <laughs> sound and you are viciously attacked by something unseen okay. teeth bite at you with a huge roll of 33 to hit this is an exact duplicate of the roll uh-huh. that attacked idrasil before <laughs> 33 it does, it does not hit it doesn't is okay it's a 43 to hit. So it's almost a critical failure concept right there. Yes. <laughs> uh, there is some biting and stuff, and you easily dodge to the side. You can sense there is some strange blurring creature uh, around you trying to bite and bite and bite and bite. What would you like to do, Yaru? Uh, with two actions, Yaru will um, summon the winds from the, the rest of the party as they're starting to transform back nice. into their bodies, uh, and will gather that and will shoot out a blast. Uh, in a straight line of 60 feet uh, at any creature uh, in my path. Okay, and this was key... This is a a wind gust attack. So I'm casting a a focus point here to get into the stance, and then I can just do the attack. All right, do it. What you got? Uh, This is a blast attack. So 32. Uh, Oh, yeah, that'll be... uh, 49. 49. Its armor class is 23. That is a critical hit. <laughs> times two. Wow. <laughs> Out times change. Uh, that is... Knocked us on our ass first time we went there. We were terrified. Three, almost minimum damage. Uh, three, five, plus... Uh, that'll be 22 points of damage. One is fire. Is that even with the double? Uh, 44 that? points of damage. 44 critical. points of damage. Uh, and the hissing and screeching sound turns into the scream. <laughs> and then all is quiet. So then goes ahead and steps in there. All right. <laughs> what Didn't you say this thing was really powerful, Xander? Yeah, it's a little wet, but I mean. It was a long time ago. I was not nearly as skilled as I am now and certainly not with heroes like you guys. Those other heroes suck. <laughs> That's why they're all dead. <laughs> I killed them all. <laughs> um, I only have low light vision. Um, what can I see in this cave? Uh, how far out is your low light Still vision? Still don't know. Pop uh, off a uh, uh, Aeon stone and okay. Oh, okay. Get, give light to the cave. Light approaches. All right. What do I see? You can see and assume the rest of you follow in that this is a cave uh, system or a couple interconnected caves with uh, some wide openings between them, but kind of a giant cave experience of uh, almost like a reddish Sedona sandstone-ish type color. Um, your boots are picking up red dust and dirt on them. Uh, it's been eroded uh, naturally over time, obviously, except for one section on the far side of this cave. By the way, this is really interesting for me because you guys, have, this cave's been here for so long and you are finally back here. Mm-hmm. Very intriguing for me. Uh, at the far side, you see uh, a section of this large cave has been smoothed by magic and construction. Uh, You see it has uh, the cave floor has been chiseled into creating almost like a brick-like pattern. 
and there is a door uh, cut into the, or chiseled, or magically carved into the far side of the cave. It is covered in a silver twinkling, uh, almost very slow motion waterfall curtain of silvery magic glittery stuff just slowly falling down that door. Uh, and that's what you see. There are no other creatures of any kind, no one attacking, and you see no corpse of this creature either. You know, I, I think uh, we should have just gone the other way. It's a waste of time. Why? It's, uh, be, have we been there by now? What other way? A waste of time? Zana just said his friends couldn't even get into this cave, but weeks ago. There is something here, Piercy, something more important than just a means to get in. This will take us directly where we need to go. Then let's go. And Piercy starts setting into the cave. Okay. You head across the cave, Piercy. You are approaching the door. You see two other things of note as you get there. One, you see there are some words that are carved into the floor in a semicircle before the door um, that you cannot understand. And a side beside the door, ah, maybe like 10 feet away from the door, casually almost tossed is a satchel that has uh, a couple of books that have uh, spilled out of the satchel. The satchel looks, the books look old, uh, but the satchel looks brand new. Uh, Piercy investigates. Investigates what? The satchel. Satchel. Um, the satchel contains two different books. They have uh, book titles on their spines that you also cannot read. Uh, do they look like a text that he has seen anywhere else before? No. Uh, one looks like it's got 50 pages, not a big book at all, uh, but, but it's a large in size. The other is also large in size tome type thing, but it only has three pages in it. We can all notice the satchel is new. And yep, the the, are, and the rest yeah. of you are coming yeah. into this cave can too. You, can you, re, you know, Sildren's standing at the semicircle of writing, um, waiting for Xanner to come up. And can you read this? Uh, Xanner goes up to look at the writing on the floor. Xanner, you read the ancient Chaloran words that are on there that read connection to the source. Those in need will never be far from it. And the source is capital T, capital S. Connection to the source. Say that out loud, Xander. <laughs> yeah, I can read it. <laughs> read it out loud, Xander. <laughs> so it says connection to the source. <gasps> those who those in need. <laughs> those in those in need. Well, it's a different conjunction. Yeah, we'll never be far from it. You said capital S, capital T? Yeah, capital T, capital S. Isn't that Devon's religion or in season two? Two source oh, thumbs. And Yaru's source, religion the right now. Source. Okay, got it. Yeah. Oh, How to yeah, feed man. Very important. <laughs> How to feed man. Okay, okay so connection time. to the source. Uh -huh. I was trying to riddle out the capital T, S, and <laughs> how that related to source. Connection right, to the you're, source. You're a new you'll elder druid. far from it. Those in need will never be far from it. What? No, I'm kidding. Did I stutter? <laughs> Does Xander look like a bitch? <laughs> Those in need. Um, Yaru. I'll never be far from it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at, at those words, Yaru kind of uh, perks up and is like audibly responsive. What does that mean to you, Yaru? The source. These are the words of my temple. There is some, Piercy, there is something greater here going on than we could possibly understand for now. We must go through. Xana. Hang on, I want to look at these books. Yeah, uh, Pleek will pick up the satchel and hand the books to Xander. All right, Xander, there are two books. The one with more pages uh, is written in Chaloran on the spine, and the title is Failed Tenants of the Oars of Faith. <laughs> we tried these. <laughs> How do you spell ORS? O-A-R-S. That way to run a... Good question. ...an organization. <laughs> United States Constitution, part one. 
The second one is called uh, Book of Lomtriel. This is Book of Lomtriel. That's the blessing that we just received from the Scoriar, uh, the Scoriel ghost. Yes. He said, may Lord yes. Lomtriel go with you. Uh, carefully, uh, Sam would like to open the book <clears throat> okay. to see if I can read it without damaging anything. Yes, you can. The book seems to be old, but somehow in very magically reinforced condition that um, you don't even think you could tear the pages. Uh, yeah, there are a couple pages in there, and they're written in Chalorn, and you're uh, trying to get the gist of what's in there? Yeah. All right. There are three pages. They're roughly one sentence each. I will read these out to you. You do not have to write them down. I have printed these out for you. Okay. Um, should we take a break? All right. Page one reads, Standing before Lomtriel, only those who bear their souls of what darkens their heart or burdens them with regret shall pass. Hmm. Page two. And again, I'll hand these out to you. And I'll paste them for all our live viewers on Twitch. Page two. The anchoring wizards created the path to the great island. It was the elemental wizards who created the locking mechanism. The Lomtriel priests guaranteed only those worthy would pass. And then page three. Though we are very few, our guild is the most powerful wizards this world has ever known. Scribbled next to that in a uh, different handwriting and in a different ink that looks much fresher are several words that are crossed out. Anchoring, Lomtriel, Scoriel, and Honorcrin are written next to it and crossed out. So I have these handouts for you guys. Cool. There you go. Are these then? Is it there you go. And Tim's all sexy. He has it printed out. Nice. Yes. That's what you read, Xanner, and okay. I assume share with the group roughly. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you for printing these out, Xanner. <laughs> it's helpful. It's, <laughs> it's very indestructible paper, so it's really nice. <clears throat> um, this is another time that we've seen areas of burying their souls and darkness in hearts. There's there's different parts of the passage that speak to that. That, I believe, is probably something that we need to take a look at for when we're passing through wherever we need to go. I believe we all have enough regrets. Oh, Let's see, I do. Sigh. Heavy sigh. Um, Xander would like to look at the other book. I, I know it's probably a bit larger. It is The Failed Tenants of the Oars of Faith. Uh, you skim through this book, and it discusses a group of secular builders and crafters who worked together to make strong communities long ago that supported one another. Uh, but then as the story goes on, uh, this is a historical description of them. Over time, they become very regimented and controlling, and their tenants of community were twisted into greed. And it describes at the last few uh, pages how they then faded into obscurity. Um, there were other books around. These were the two that were inside the satchel. There are right? no other books. No other books, just the two. Okay, great. They, they, they were the ones that were around. Yaru, you were talking about the connection to the source and how that's what you refer to as your temple, that, that uh, from where you get your power. How do you connect to the source? That is a very good question. And one I have been seeking the answer to my entire journey. The source is not something like Sildren in Bali that I can communicate with at will or call upon. It is the essence of all life, as far as I understand. I thought when we were in the 11th span that the great gear on the horizon was the source itself. It seems I've been mistaken and more times than I can count. Yep. I don't know what the vision of we're looking for looks like. But I think 
I think I and I think we will know the source when we see it. But I do not have an answer for you now. And that reminds me. We forgot to ask you what that spirit said to you. Honestly, I kind of forgot about it. (laughs) 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 I didn't have anything to write down, so... And Yaru brushes it off. Brush it off, Yaru. I... The spirit... He looked at me with great disdain. It was hard for me to even remember. I will think on it. But for now, we must gain access to this doorway. Is it a closed door, or is it just an open It is a wall? doorway, as Yaru said, with What's the difference between a door and a doorway, Xander? <laughs> <laughs> it is a doorway with no door, but like this curtain of silvery stuff slowly falling down and falling down before it. All right. That's yes to y'all. And Piercy begins to walk up to and through the door. If Piercy you... walks through, the stuff uh, bounces off you almost like a liquid, but then f- completely falls off of you as you walk on through, Piercy, with no issues whatsoever. What do we see? That's exactly what you see. Okay. And Piercy's there on the other side. He's on the other side, okay. and he's quickly disappearing into the darkness beyond. All right. Uh, so uh, we'll yeah, not, Yaru will kind of quickly walk in. Believe we will last. All right, so I would assume Sildren has a neutral take on life a lot with balance as I, as, as I would with Yaru. Um, <clears throat> with Piercy, I would assume a bit more uh, cogent, law-abiding type vibe at times. I don't know how one would describe Palik. How would you describe Palik? <laughs> Chaotic she, evil. Uh. <laughs> she follows her own code. Okay. So she has a um, a binding. Um, she has uh, rules that uh, she follows that she doesn't really discuss with anybody else. But there are lines she won't cross. It's a chaotic. You want to name some of those lines? <laughs> <laughs> what's the, what's that, sir? Oh, he asked if I wanted to name any of those oh. codes, and I said no. Uh, yeah, I agree with that, Sildren. Uh, all right, everyone goes through without any problems until Palik does. As Palik crosses, the silver starts to burn away at you, uh, and you take 30 points of, uh, oh, correction. Uh, it could be 40 or 20. Uh, 30 was the average I wrote down. Uh, so make a willpower save. Sorry, f- uh, fort save. Uh, 43. Uh, You take 20 points of damage uh, and you feel a draining sensation upon you. Uh, Make another fortitude save. Target is only 36. Um, 44. You're fine and you get through with just a mild burn upon you as some of them you scrape it off and get it off of you and then you're fine on the other side. What kind of damage was it? Uh, I wanted, I said fire, but it's supposed to be electrical. Okay. It's good. (laughs) (laughs) Silver does pass a mildly judgmental look over Palik on that one. Do you have some sort of resistances I should know about? No, I was just curious. Then I'll go ahead and reveal the true, (laughs) the true type of damage. Uh, It is lawful damage. Okay. It is lawful damage. damage. Yep. A specific type of damage that only affects those of the opposite alignment, if you will. And not that we have strict alignments here in our game, but there you go. Whoever was here did not want rapscallions coming through. Low level rapscallions. Yes. (laughs) On the other side, you find yourself in a chamber that is a little tight, maybe, I don't know, 50 by 50, 40 by 40, but a tall of 30, 40 feet tall in this uh, second room. It has three levels to it, this room. It has level one at the ground floor. It has level two steps up to a narrow balcony that uh, rings half of this uh, chamber. And then there's a level three with stairs up to a third balcony. 
There are two doors here. There is an open black double door, and then there is a much larger steel door with a massive contraption attached to it. Uh, this device takes up the majority of the room. Uh, it is a metal a device with dark stone as well. It appears to have, um, appears to be roughly about two and a half stories tall. Uh, it is composed of many seams. Uh, Seams. This is the device. Device. Oh, okay. Seamless stone, curved stone, which is quite impressive to you, Bali, but it also has some cogs and gears attached to it. Its most pronounced feature is some sort of extension arm, like an articulated steel beam that is permanently attached between the device and the second huge steel door. In addition, you can see scattered across this room haphazardly are about a dozen colored cubes. They're about a foot square and appear to be made of some sort of uh, opaque glass. Do they look like they would fit in anything of the gears, cogs, or anything in that machinery? No. How big are the cubes? One foot square. And there's 12 of them? Yes. Is there a pattern? To their placement on and the ground? They they all, different different colors. Colors. all different colors and haphazard. Haphazard. And essentially looks like some magical contraption uh, that fell into ruin after many centuries of neglect, um, but is has this purpose. And there is this slight... Um, droning sound that comes from it. Very, very low, but kind of quiet. Like a dull hum. Um, Sildren, I guess, grabs Xander and is walking around the machinery with them, trying to, like, do you make, can, can you make sense of this? Like, what do you think this does? What do we got here? Trying to figure okay. out exactly mm -hmm. what the hell this, this thing is going to do. Uh, Yaru, you see not too far away and covered by a couple of these cubes, there is a uh, brass cog. I'm um, sorry, not covered by the cubes, but next to the cubes, there's a brass cog that's about three foot in diameter, is your best guess, that is wedged into the wall. Uh, does it look like I can pull it out? You can give it a whirl. Uh, yeah, Yaru looks around the room, sees Sildren kind of forcing Xander's face down into stuff, <laughs> looking around. Um, Pointing for him to see. Sees, <laughs> sees Bali admiring stones and stuff and just walks over to the lever and grabs with both of his uh, hands and tries to pull it Make out. an athletics roll. I'm weak. Master in athletics. Ooh. We used to make a ton of these a long time ago. Oh, We've made no, athletics no, no. in a long time. Uh, that would be a... Because uh, we're starting to deal with deal with those types of encounters more to spells. Things than... you can't punch your way through. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 41. 41. You were able to yank, yank, and pull out this uh, brass cog. Uh, it appears to be uh, cracked, uh, damaged, and you believe in no way was supposed to be within this wall. I think I fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> Xander and Sildren, you guys were looking around. What did you say you were looking at? Just trying to figure out like how the machine might work, what it is, what it like its purpose, intent. Um, you know, we've seen some chain gates, we've seen some stuff on the eleventh span, we've seen some other teleportation devices. So, you know, uh, trying to get a. Uh, I'm assuming this is either going to open the door or teleport us somewhere. So okay. Uh, looking around here uh, on this ground floor, you can see one thing, possibly two. Uh, both of you can make crafting rolls. Crafting and Bali rolls. is uh, ascending. Okay. Yeah. So it's probably... I'm gonna use my second hero point. I roll four. To get a, a look down to get in a view of that, and failing yeah. that, we'll try to advance a little higher up to get an even better view. So right now you're going to the level two. Going to level two. Okay. Xander found him. Natural twenty. Ooh, with a natural 20, I'll give you some details. You see two things. You see there is a, um, a inset section of maybe like a fireplace size hole within the machine on this ground floor. Uh, and at the 
bottom of this uh, cut within the machine is a circular concave little uh, spot um, that is filled with some damp, slightly damp looking earth inside of it. Two feet above it is a conical metal piece, and you can see it is attached further on with this machine with some strange gears and pulleys. And then there is a message in Chiloran uh, upon this that reads, Combining the first three rises the fourth, which is the key. Correct. Um, uh, and there was additional information because you got an actual 20. Uh, you also see that there is a, a section that has been uh, blown open. It was actually a stone panel that has weird hinges that was magically opened and it was blasted open. It took some impact and there is a several cogs within there, old stone cogs and brass cogs um, that one is missing from there. You also believe that this device as I said before, was uh, is old and neglected, but has recently been jury rigged with uh, much more recent uh, cogs and bits to get it working, made of brass and such. Yeah. Bali and Palik, you guys went up to level two. Mm -hmm. uh, at level two, you see there is a. Um, you're now on this little balcony, and the balcony goes around, and it looks like this balcony is designed to get close to the device at this level. Uh, you see there is a circular uh, stone uh, disc that is attached to the device, and um, as you look at it, it rotates slightly, so it looks like it can spin around, and there are four... Stand by. One, two, three, four uh, square slots in this plate. Are they the same size squares as the cubes? They are one foot by one foot squares. Piercy goes over and looks at the cubes. Uh, you look at the cubes. You see there are nine cubes of all sorts of different colors. You said there's how many how many slots? There are. F they see four slots. They, they see four, and there's nine cubes of there all nine, different colors. Not twelve. There are nine. That, there's now nine cubes. There are nine. What happened to the other three? There were about a dozen. <laughs> Are there any reddish, orange, fiery looking cubes? Yes, there is. There is a black, a blue, brown, clear, green, gray, orange, red, and yellow. Piercy grabs the clear. Okay. The blue. Okay. The red. The red. Okay. And the blue, uh, brown. And the brown, okay. You have those cubes in your arms. They're a little heavy, but you got them. In his mouth pouch. <laughs> <laughs> Men, curiously strong amends. <laughs> and um, I'm assuming he's, you know, hearing the others kind of talk amongst themselves as mm. they're sure. exploring and things yeah, and he walks he walks over to where Bali and Palik are at the uh, square holes all right you guys staying there or are you going up to the third floor no. um, Palik stay there all right I'm, I'm moving up to the upper okay floor. what are you doing Piercy Piercy's inserting the blue the red and the clear into the first three slots. Okay, you drop this cube and it should fall right through, but it stays in place. And then you're able to rotate this big disc around and you drop another one in there and it stays in place. You do that for all the three you just listed. And then takes the fourth one, the brown one, okay. and puts it in the fourth slot. You slide the disc over, you drop the brown one in. There is a Violent, scary surge of electricity. Make a reflex save is what you think, but instead it holds in place. The spark doesn't hit, and the thing slowly starts to rotate, and the humming sound increases. 
Clever boy. Right now. Bali! No you are up at the top third level. Uh, there is a flat stone section. That's the only thing you find with a hand imprint within the stone and words above it. Uh, I try to read the words. The words are in Chaloran. Do you speak Chaloran? I do not speak Chaloran. You do not know. There's one among us who speaks Chaloran. <laughs> Coming! <clears throat> Xander flies up to see Bali. Okay. Therefore. You are there. I'm there to read. Uh, you see these words that are carved into the stone next to the hand imprint, and it reads, Speak the name of the greatest wizards of Varen, or this path will forever remain sealed to you. Oh, shit. <laughs> of the greatest wizards of Varen. Sorry. Z- Xander puts his hand in and says, Trinal! Uh, there is a blue pulse, a small spark, and the humming of the machine uh, grows, and this section starts to slowly rotate. Wow, on you its knew own. that like instantly. <laughs> the the trinal, the, the three wizards that created, yeah. <laughs> well, he sits <laughs> back. Does everybody know that? <laughs> it's a weird thing that we all. Here, see, have take three points of fire damage for uh, that burn. Because... <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. I was gonna write it down, but yeah, I'd have it. So, so that, so that was the next tier that was turning. You said. Yep. Eh, meanwhile. So there's still another tier that hasn't, uh, and then there's an, uh, the two doors that are in the room. Sodran has been looking, like seeing Yaru with the gear, and seeing what Yaru has been looking at. Sodran's trying to like kind of piece it together to see if he can maybe figure out how to reconstruct that that what's been dis- um, damaged. Okay. You think there's a chance it would involve some uh, some pushing and shoving and attaching pieces like a tight chain on a bicycle. Okay. I'm just collecting information right. at this point. All right. What would you guys like to do? You said there's another tier going up? No. No, that, that was the top, so we're, we're, we're back down. Oh, there's so. uh, some doors, black doors the we black haven't looked right? at yet. Do we want to fix the damage to this? You want some help fixing? Yes. Kind of handy. Yeah, your, your small hands may come in handy. <laughs> it's good. It's good. <laughs> uh, Xander will go into the de- uh, one of the uh, the black doors. Okay. On the left. Uh, Oh, okay, we're right, going Xander, through doors now. As you go just through black doors, not together. Just going right through <laughs> black, uh, ominous, in, in, in black doors. Good, good, good. Just go, Xander. Yeah, you fun. go through the black doors. <laughs> you almost trip uh, and lightly kick uh, just a few feet. A gold-colored sword laying on the ground, and it looks to have been uh, damaged on uh, near the tip of it. Just the tip just the tip and you can also see there's some uh looks some damage on the wall it looks to have been swung hard against a wall and then left behind there's a small corridor that this sword is lying on only like maybe 15 feet and then there is a dark small dark room just beyond it is a 30 foot 30 foot cube of a room uh, of uh, black stone you see no exits from where you're at okay uh, Xander will continue to go into the room. You see the stonework is perforated on all all three, all four walls, as far as you know, uh, perforated by thousands of little ho- uh, holes. The three walls, other than the entrance you're approaching from, the three walls uh, taper uh, into middle points that look almost like a horizontal pyramid cutting through the wall. Hopefully that makes some sort of sense. Yeah. So imagine like a, a, a pyramid cone but on the side, and that's the wall comes to an end there, so they cone out. Looks kind of like an arrow slit. Yeah, um, but there's no there's no uh, slit at the very end. Uh, and you can also see um, uh, there is a purple cube that is lying askew on the floor on the far side of the room. And as you get closer to entering this room, by the way, you also uh, feel something odd about the hair on your arms and legs. Feels. He has some. Uh, Xander detects magic. No, 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 
You detect no magic. How far do you go? 30 feet? Uh, that, yeah, you said towards the back, where I see, wherever the purple cube is, I'm going to that. Yeah, you detect no magic. Okay, I still feel tingly. Yes. Okay. Um, weird feelings. Xander's going to grab the one foot by one foot cube, which probably takes up my chest. Before you do, uh, as you're about to step in the room, you feel your clothes and your robe and your pack and every bit of equipment on you start to vibrate and shake. (gasps) Meyer. Like everything? Everything. (laughs) Everything's buzzing. Um, Xander's going to back up. Okay. We're going to just, just back out of the room and see if anything changes. You back out, and then you just have this little tingling sensation on your skin. Hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. What's in there, Xander? Uh, it, there's a purple cube at the ba- at the end. There's a lot of lines of holes down the wall, and it's very uh, active. But, oh. Like, everything buzzes and vibrates on you when you're in the room. How far into the room is the cube? Uh, 15 feet. Uh, yeah. Yaru, I could teleport in there. And try to could get you it. not get to the cube? Was it I, like that shaky? Like everything on me was shaking. It was like like my clothes were shaking. What if you took every? What if you took everything off? <laughs> <laughs> This has all been a clever ruse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she built this long ago. My robes feel pretty special. <laughs> okay. Uh, Yari, if you think you can get it, I don't know if what it is, but it was it was a weird effect. Mm. It's not magic. It's a gamble. Do you think it's worth it? I don't know if we need that cube. I don't know. Piercy slotted four of them upstairs, and it seemed to do something. Maybe we should keep looking around and see if there's any more spots for the cubes, because there's still a bunch laying out here. That's a good point. Yeah. Also Let's continue. Also grab yeah. that broken golden sword and All right. pocket it. You have Does it. Does it look like an honor crin sword? Yes. Okay. Mm. Uh, yes, let's continue to build and see what we can yeah. find. Well, there's one more door. Let's see where that leads, and then we will perhaps failing finding any other thing of use Isn't the machine attached to this big ass door yeah are we able to open the other door uh you can try uh but it's like there's like something barring it right uh you there's children like, you're going over there to take a look well i mean i, I can see it from I, I should be able to see it where from where i'm standing like like the machine you said sort of attaches to that there's yes. like a bar yeah, it's, it's a two-story steel door okay yes. gotcha I'm not going over. Okay. And what was uh, Xander doing? I didn't hear that in resolution. Uh, Xander was backing out and saying Yaru could go ahead and teleport in. Oh, okay. But we had decided to sort of kind of see what else is going on. Anything Piercy and Bali are doing? Piercy's just kind of sitting on his haunches, just kind of chilling. All right. There was this handprint, and then Xander spoke the words. Uh Along the wall, is there any other openings or nope. nothing like that? Any Come on, other? gather around. Let's take a look at this box and this mechanism and put the best of our abilities together to see if we cannot repair this mechanism. And I will hand Palik, actually, Yaru had the gear. Um, if you will give Palik yeah, yeah. the gear, <laughs> three foot gear, and let us all watch, and if our expertise seems to be of value, then contribute. All right. So, like, if it's an arcana, arcana roll instead of crafting, maybe mm. Xanner speak. Bleak, you have crafting more than just trained, yes? Uh, yeah, I'm a master. Wow. All right, Bleak, you grab a hold of this huge brass gear and can see that it has a crack going through it, and you're a little worried that if it gets used, it may break in its current condition. Can anybody do do any magic on this to, to maybe fix it a little? I have not prepared. If this breaks, we're, we're probably shit out of luck. Yeah, I have not prepared. I can, probably but I would need a day's rest, rest to consider it. What about you, Zany? I, I can break a lot of things. I'm, I'm 
I've been training myself in the things that I have that come in or you know me, I'm forceful. I can burn stuff yeah, and build walls. I had to ask. Oh. Hey, he, he, uh, Stone Whisperer. Don't you don't do, do shit with metal. Okay. Yaru, Yaru has it's Stone untrained, Whisperer. Somebody Yaru has a skill called something. Untrained Improvisation. Uh-huh. Uh, could I use that to aid Palik as a master in crafting to get the gear piece, like, functional? Mm -hmm. uh, you might be able to do that when she's trying to find a spot for it. Um, but not what she's asking about right so, now. So does it look like this cog can be repaired by means like of just attaching something like like with inserting, it, attaching? Does it, or is it going to have to be like forged and welded and stuff like this? If we put like a clamp on it where it's cracked, would that? Pleek, make a crafting roll. Wait, where the fuck are we find a clamp? And add plus one for Yaru. I know exactly where shoulder. we can find a clamp. 38. 38. Uh, you think it's going to need some sort of uh, heat to get that crack. Some heat. Okay. Sol solid, sol sold, sold, soldered. Xana? That I got. <laughs> <laughs> if you need some meat, I can get some meat. You want to... Meteor shower! <laughs> can, ba can Bali... Well, Xana can actually... Stone do. whisperer. <laughs> Stone. Uh, Xana can cast Maybe, a I don't know. Uh, flaming sphere. Uh, and... He has uh, constant, uh, whatever it's called, uh, sustainability. So I can I can sustain it with, with even out concentration now. It it can just be an ongoing growing flaming sphere. So it's just sitting there whenever you need it. What's down here? Bali starts walking. To All us right. Now. We got fire, but I don't. I mean, just sticking this in there is probably not gonna fix it. Well, I I, mean, I can That's... help you with crafting it if you need it. I am an you expert. can shape it? Sure, I can do a little bit. I can't shape with with the fire. We'd have to bang it with something. Well, I mean, could you touch it when it's all heated up? Could you touch it and try to manipulate it back together? Like when you become like the fire guy? Yeah. Wait, I could use my yes, I could use my fire body to to shape it and mold it. I'd be immune to the flame at least. Yeah. I mean, I can't touch it if it's hot. You got a guy with a hammer right there. He can help. Stoke. Right. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Xander will cast... Just put uh, a soldering bead on it, run it, and be done. <laughs> if, if Xander casts fire... I left my holy TIG well for it. <laughs> it lasts for a minute, but uh, with casting fire body, Xander becomes flame and is immune to fire damage. Okay. And so if we heat up the cog, heat up the, the brass of the cog... Xander could go in using crafting to smooth out and clean that up. You could, with Palik's direction, perhaps uh, have a chance at that, but you need some sort of tool. This is like using like Minecraft like to build a calculator. Like what? Like a hammer tool? Sure. Like, like clamps? Cause sure. If you could lend me your hammer. I can get you a clamp. I mean, I have a, I have a, like a, a hammer. You want his big hammer? No, I mean, if you got a hammer that, that works with the brass a little bit more, but it doesn't have to be the ceremonial stone hammer. Yeah. That, that I use it for climbing and stuff. And then Sildren walks over to Piercy and is like, give it up. And like holds out his hand. Give it up. Piercy, Piercy uh, give it. Piercy does it all. <laughs> spit? What does he spit out? He spits out a little, uh, a little ball peen type hammer. A okay. Clamp, clamp, clamp. We need clamps, not hammers. We got a hammer. <laughs> okay. But you got to wait a day now. <laughs> <laughs> I've got four. I can, I can hold four. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, all right. Press so you have hammer. some tools. Xander, create, you create a, a flaming sphere. Is that correct? Create a flaming sphere, then cast fiery body on myself so that I'm immune to the flame. All right. And, and it, it doesn't hurt me. It doesn't affect me. And I go in to start working on repairing the, the cog. You do so. You have this sphere. You turn into sphere. We have this ad hoc blacksmithing forging going on. You grab onto this cog. You rub it and move it around the sphere. You get it hot, and then you start hammering, asking for Polite for instructions. You have Yaru helping her. Uh, so Lefty Lucy, righty tight. <laughs> Polite, you get to make the crafting roll. Plus one for Yaru helping. Minus two for Xanner helping. No. <laughs> this isn't even the weirdest thing I've done. 
<laughs> I got a hero point that's seven. sitting here. Yeah, I have a. Your halfling luck? I'm a guiding luck, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> He's changed the dice. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, 30. 30. Uh, you uh, guide Xander to hammer and hammer and hammer, and uh, it, it looks... little flaccid arms just aren't enough. It, it looks <laughs> great, Xander. <laughs> it looks great! Oh, jigga, jigga, yeah, jigga, jigga. it sure does. Well, it probably just like fell through his hands because they're fires. <laughs> so, yeah, so we're good? <laughs> that look, Tom. <laughs> yeah, you already just walked back there. down the street. See what happens. So what are you guys doing? I thought we got this one already. <laughs> Uh, all right, so Xamarin will yeah. uh, dispel it, and then he can cover it in water, cool it, all right. and harden it, and uh, it's ready, I think, let's, pretty sure. Let's give it a go. He rolls it over to you, Palik. You are able to grab this worn piece of metal cog, and in that open stone uh, compartment area, you see a good spot to slot it, and you do so, and wiggle some other pieces and rods into, into what you think works, and after a while, it starts to move and move and move, and you can hear the sound uh, growing ever so slightly louder, the you humming sound. You step back and away. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so the that's all turning. So all three of the discs are turning now. Right? No. Oh, okay. okay. The bottom ground level is not. It's not turning. Now. And that is where there is a, a fireplace-like section slot in the side um, that has the writing in there. So there's like a fireplace okay. on the first level. What? Second, Second level's done. Second level was the disc with the things, mm -hmm. and the third level was the handprint with the, what the was words. The writing? the writing said... Oops, sorry. I wrong page for my notes. Uh, the writing said... Combining the first three, rise to the fourth. While... Which is the key. Which is which the key. Is, yeah, there you go. Right, right, right. Cutting me off. you got to finish the whole thing, buddy. Buddy. Piercing. And it is currently, again, like a fireplace thing, and then has like this little... A bowl inverted bowl cut into it uh, and that has some slightly damp earth in it and then above it is a weird little conical shape an inverted bowl like a bowl like a bowl it's not a bowl but it's a how cut in the how big is the earth. cut what yeah sildren what is that earth over there it's like a big popcorn bowl okay uh, what what the kind pierce, of dirt is that piercy it's a good kind. <laughs> <laughs> he pockets a, a handful and then maybe a second one. Uh, Piercy <laughs> love this. walks over. Ya Yaru. Yes. And uh, Xander. Yeah. Uh, come kidding. here. Xander does. All five feet. And <laughs> opens up his water flask and pours it into this bowl. Okay, this bowl of dirt. Yeah. Okay, it is now muddy-ish. Uh, pours, pours enough in to clean it out. Okay. So now we have a clean bowl. So you're cleaning the bowl out. Yeah. Got it. All right. It takes some effort, but yes. Okay. Uh, then once it's clean, pours the rest of his water flask into the bowl. Okay. Um, Xander, make the fire in the bowl, and Yaru, you make the vent in the bowl. Xander produces flame and places it inside the bowl. All right. You create uh, some steam, and the steam rises up. The vent, the vent. Yaru doesn't, it's not really how it works, but Yaru will kind of try to summon the winds uh, from his, uh, yeah. Just yeah. <laughs> he grabs one of those air pressers and starts pushing it. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll. Enter my wind stance again, I guess, or I'm still in it. Yeah, you I have suppose. like a wind punch or something. Too, but yeah, yeah, but it, the it. You're I mean, if we're going by the just... writing, it only works against creatures, so I can't really. No, you can go. Punch the ball. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Yara will just start, you know, Shang Chi summoning wind, and before you pull that off, uh, by the time you cast your flame what kind of flame did you use produce flame, produce flame. Yeah. uh as the steam rises into this small conical section above this fireplace the top of this fireplace thing uh you hear it somehow reacting this machine and there's some clicking noise but it doesn't seem to be completing whatever it's trying to do 
some earth in it as well. It's a tree. Combined a tree. Okay. You don't think that's the three discs? Oh, yeah. I mean, the wind is important, but if that doesn't work. All right. And then, Yaru, you were doing um, Kung Fu Air Punch? Yeah, I'm I'm really just, uh, I guess if that's how it has to be, I'll just punch air into the uh, thing. Otherwise, I would be more kind of and making it more kung fu, like, tai chi like looking. Tai chi yeah. Dragon Ball type stuff. Yeah. But if it's All funnier. Right. It's motor's <laughs> turning over, but we're not firing is what I'm hearing. It's You hear this click, 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 click. And it's then the starter. It just hit it a couple times. <laughs> Children, you, throw the dirt in. Yaru starts doing this punching thing. Yeah. Okay. Nothing seems to happen as you do that. And Children will add some of the dirt that he pocketed. Okay, you... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you... not the bright lotus! Not the bright lotus! <laughs> you throw some of the dirt in there and it creates a little dirty, muddy pile in there. Would more... Put, putting out my fire? Would more, would more... Well, you just did one fire thing. Yeah. Would more steam maybe do something? Or, or we my don't fire? have everything... Yeah, I thought it was like a continuous here. thing we were doing. A Pleak wants to go back to where the gears were and... Does it look like everything's moving? Yes. Okay. And no, Yar, that's not what I had, Alistair. Oh, I was. I thought we were like continuing to pour yeah. fire oh, and okay. wind into yeah, the thing. Yeah, like yeah. I mean, that's been like my fan too. We're trying to get like every all of those elements going in sequence. Okay. So instead of shoveling coal, I'm pushing yeah. wind into this thing, and, <laughs> yeah. and Xander's just. <laughs> Just breathing fire into a thing. All right. Cat folk bellows. Here C is listening closely, and you hear click, 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 and then you hear something catch, chunk, and then the whole bottom section starts to rotate with a That's slight funny. grinding noise. Tim gains a hero point. Nice. While we do all the work. <laughs> <laughs> the whole machine now. Who would have known the rat was the brains behind it all, right? The whole machine is now rotating. Bottom piece clockwise, second piece Xander, counterclockwise, top piece clockwise. <laughs> it fired. rotates. And as it does so, there is a, a loud, uh, almost gas release sound and a metal grinding noise. And the articulated arm starts to pull in. As it does so, it moves this entire 20 foot huge steel door and pulls it out as it's permanently attached to the arm and pulls it close to the machine, revealing an opening beyond. Good job, everybody. <laughs> Let's get through the door. Keep going, Yaru. <laughs> I'll hold it open. I'll get it. <laughs> uh, yeah, Percy's begins walking up. Yeah, after you, you should do that to be first. <laughs> mm -hmm. Doesn't say anything, just starts walking. Okay. Uh, Piercy ignores you all and walks on through. The rest of the group follows. Uh, yeah, Yaru will call up to Bali on the third floor. Come on, we got it. Bali's on the first floor <laughs> in a room with the conical vibrating craziness. Okay, you're going in that room? Yeah. All right, as you approach, you feel everything, all the gear and everything on you start to shake on your body and you step in the room, you're doing something in particular? I was <laughs> looking at the- Getting a massage. Yes. <laughs> Happy ending. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is wonderful. <laughs> I love this. I stay here. <laughs> You continue shopping. Having his character experiences real life. I know. I'm just now it's just Christopher in that room. Oh, God. Um, uh, um, um, You're thinking it too, Seth. Don't you shake your head at me. Um, Before you answer, Bali, oh, things hello. then start to feel a little off and then a little wrong. And then you feel a pulling, not at just your equipment, but at the very fabric of magic around you. I need you to roll a 20-sided die. Okay. And don't roll a one for each piece of magical equipment you have, or it loses its magical properties. Whoa. How many? You got to look at your gear list and go down each magical piece. This, oh, each magical piece. Yep. Uh, I don't know. Starting at the top. Because that would suck if it was your <laughs> If Xander went in there, we'd still be rolling. <laughs> no, no joke. Like, like, I'm looking at 20 items. Okay. I am rolling. 12. What's the first item what on is the it? list? Call it out and then roll. Antidote greater. Okay. 
Forget consumable. Ah, uh, forget consumables. Forget consum- good. It forget was a one. Con- <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is an old one. So brave of dashing. This is my armor, my bracers, and that was a fourteen. My cassock, which is my principal item, and you said ones, right? Ones. Okay, I've only rolled one one so far. It didn't count, so we're moving on. This is my circlet of persuasion with a twenty. Nat 20? My dagger, which is non-magical, so I'll move to the next one. That's greater life. Greater moderate or moderate life. No, we don't. Those are consumable. Oh, sorry. Hair beads, 18. These are huge, by the way, items that he's just casually going uh, to buy. Right. Well. <laughs> yeah, just counting up. Like, yeah, it does suck. And he has um, to do this for every item. Inspiring spotlight. Every permanent magic item, yes. Oh. Uh, not magic, consumable, doesn't exist, non... Well, the Warhammer is now magical. Warhammer rolls a three. <laughs> cool. Close. And that's it? Um, that's a consumable, that's a consumable. You guys gave me all your consumables, so that's it. All right, you go running out of the room to try and find out what's going on. You feel your breath leaving you. You try and catch your breath. You also, for the next 24 hours, anytime you cast a leveled spell, not a cantrip, you must not roll a one on a 20-sided oh. die or that spell is wasted. Um, okay. But you still retain the actions. Okay, so the so spell squat like, gets like extended. That spell, extended. Damn it, I thought I had that spell, and you don't. Mm. Okay. And But you can immediately cast something else, but then not roll a one on that one. Yeah. Uh, is that hero pointable at all, or no? Uh, yeah. Okay. And you are outside of this room. You can decide whether or not you grab that cube. It's up to you. Uh, no, I'll leave it behind. Okay. I don't think I went through the room. Interesting. And don't go in there. Ready to- you didn't grab the cube while you were there, standing right over it, shaking around? I was vibrating around. I didn't have time to grab anything. <laughs> it was like the I little football it. game from back in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pull yeah. your pants up and let's go. <laughs> yeah, you guys know what I'm talking about. Sure do. <laughs> <laughs> Still have that in my bed, Droom. <laughs> All right, Bali, you're following the rest of the group then? I am now. Great. <laughs> Good idea, yeah. sir. What was that, Yaru? Follow you? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, you guys follow Piercy uh, into this next room, which is a smaller chamber. It is brightly lit by unseen sources of magic. The walls just have light splashing across them. Uh, there is a no other exits here. You see there is one thing and one thing only, and it is a statue of a bald man who is cross-legged, and he's wearing just a loincloth, and he has uh, both of his hands outstretched as though waiting for something or offering something. Or a couple cubes, like a purple one. It's right back there. <laughs> Go for it. I stand corrected. There are also... Because uh, you come in one door, on the three other walls, there are three plaques that are on the walls with words that are engraved in uh, common above each common. plaque. Yes. Huh. And they say? The words above the plaques, one reads, The Devourer. The second one reads, Defying the Kings. The third one reads, The Great Scourge. The plaques themselves are blank. You were, said defying? Defying the kings. And what was the third one? The Great, the Great Scourge. Scourge. And, and several of you, with anyone who's trained in society or arcane, know the Great Scourge is where a massive amount of amazing magic used throughout the Jorloran Empire was destroyed. Yeah. yeah. Sounded familiar. The devourer is familiar as well. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the battle with uh, Charles. And defying the kings was an element of Scourge and I, was what you described. Um, the plaques that are there, these write, writing are above the plaques, but the plaques themselves, is, they're just like empty frames? 
or is there something there? Uh, they're uh, darker stone. So it's white walls of stone. These are black stone, like back out in the machine room of stone. Uh, maybe the size of our big picture here. Like, what is it, like a three by four? Yeah. Um, that's a t a, that sticks out from the wall just a couple inches. But it's smooth and uh, there's nothing on them. Yaru, this figure, is he reminiscent of your temple? Make a religion roll, Yaru. It's a human? Yes. Hmm. No. Natural 20. Woo! You nice. know him personally. So a total of <laughs> uh, 41 total, natural 20. Our natural 20. This is the god uh, Lomtriel. Hmm. And uh, stand by. He is the god of duty and sacrifice of the Chaloran faith from long ago. And though Yaru does not know this, um, our group has run into a statue like this before. Mm -hmm. uh, Perhaps we'll talk about it in the after show for our patron subscribers. Yeah. <laughs> you sure have. So those involved in that would recognize the statue as well? Uh, yes. Hmm. I'm going to need... Man, hmm. Yeah, you're gonna have to jog the my number. Tower of Scoriel in Tabernacle. Yeah. There was a uh, there was a statue when when Nigno went swimming. Oh yeah. Um, no, I mean? think that was Killian. Jix was not there for that, nor Piercy. So. There's an Interstellar thing. So it'd be a Xanar thing uh, again. Yep. What would you like to do? Um, uh, you said the hands were outstretched. Is there anything in the hands? Nope, they are open palms. Um, would they up. fit a nice one one foot by one foot by one foot cube? No. 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 Does okay. Xanar know um, that Lamtriel, he, he is the god of the Chaloran uh, race and the duty and sacrifice? Does Xanar know all, all that, Jeremy? Uh, Xanar... Well, Xander might have a little bit of lore around that. Just but, aside but, from like recognizing know the face. A lot of the, the long shell things. That, I, right? I only asked to, just so that Yara can say, I, I don't know the Chaloran religions, but I do know this is Lomtriel and his, the words they commonly used were duty and sacrifice. But this is an ancient religion, although we are in an ancient place. There's more Chaloran artifacts. The, um, I seem to recall that there was a bit of a blessing when I encountered another statue like this. Uh, it was also buried very deep, but actually under a tower. It's a funny story. Anyway, we were there and we were able to gain some sort of boon uh, by making a offering to it. I don't remember what the offering was. I, I was trying to jog my memory, but it was so long ago. Standing before Lomtriel, only those who bear their souls of what darkens their heart or burdens them with regret shall pass. Yaru will walk up to the statue I am Yaru, of the Temple of the Three Winds. I once called myself Master, but this world has humbled me. I have been in torture, I have been in pain, but all of this was deserved. For I betrayed those closest to me for selfish ambition of what I thought would bring an end to war only brought corruption, deceit, and pain. I now offer a promise to Lomtriel. We will end Scorgenar's dark shadow over this realm. We will destroy the Wavering Sphere 
And if it takes my life, then that is the sacrifice it will take. And he kind of bows in front of the statue. Not sure if it'll do anything. Okay. Uh, one of the plaques has some weird visual thing that catches your eye. Which one is it, Yaru? Defying Kings. You see there is text Defying that documents. appears upon that plaque. Uh, you don't have to write this down. I will provide it for you. Uh, it says, <clears throat> Scorgenar returned to the five kings he served, but found them corrupted by greed. He rose against them to free Varen from their control. With his power, he nearly brought all the kings to an end. And then the wall the plaque is attached to fades away from your view, and you see there is a corridor beyond. Yaru will kind of without saying anything he'll walk through you see yaru walk through a solid wall ducking underneath this placard the rest of us see the writing and the plaque. no yaru says what he says and walks away oh, we see it we that see the wall weird. disappear no bali how do you we walk, just through see him stone? walk through it okay you ask it nicely you ask the stone nicely or i ask you nicely no, you asked the stone nicely. Did you not say that devouring the kings is Scorchinar's thing? A thing related to him? De defying the kings, yes. Hmm. He was given great power by the, the five kings and, you know, uh, then the trial before that, but the five kings entrusted him as the champion, but he found them, if I recall correctly, to be corrupt and, uh, decided that he needed to use the power for himself to purify the land. And that was when they had to use the great attack in what it eventually became the great scourge of the trial wizards using all of their power to defeat him, at least as much as they could. And the great scourge was what? That was the, that was the trial wizards using all of the power that they had to take him down. It, it was, it was a huge, draining of magic on the entire world this this massive force that changed the way all of Varen reacted to magic we must follow Yaru and Sodrin will stand before the statue of Lomtrail um, and conjures for himself a vision of Yafane a vision of Alina the orcs um, slain at Slain Rock. Sir Brenrose frozen in ice. Ignal. Ivoron. Mirskon. Jix. And Yaru. Okay. <laughs> Leave some for the rest of the group. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> the whole campaign. Children has regrets. <laughs> um, and we'll bow. All right. As you saw Yaru did. Um, one of the plaques flashes briefly catching your eye. Which one is it? It's not the one I want to go through. <laughs> the one I went through? Yes. He will yeah, we should stick together. defying the kings. Okay. Uh, you see the text appear that I already described, and you see there is a corridor beyond, and Yaru walking down it. I, not being a jerk, will say <laughs> what I see, <laughs> and then proceed. Wh what through. do you say? Uh, there is writing on the plaque that I can see. I forget what it was, so I say it. Um, and a corridor, and I see Yaru. Okay. And I. Does he see Yaru? Yep. You. All right. We'll follow. Done. Sildren walks through a solid wall, white stone wall. Uh, Piercy walks up, I guess. <laughs> I love <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. As I'm facing your regret. <laughs> Um, Should we all go down the same one? I mean, 
Does it not seem likely we need to unlock all three of them? You have to be humble to get in, lady. <laughs> Only the penitent man <laughs> shall pass. <laughs> you don't know me. So <laughs> <laughs> well, that answer helps. <laughs> um, uh, maybe if we all go the same at at the time, and we can come back and go down to different ones. I don't ones. We know we can do it more than once. We don't. But if we can, then we all split up for who knows how long. I think it's a stupid idea. I, I didn't say I was going to do it. I was just talking about it. He, you guys need to chill the fuck out. He, he, turns, he turns to face the statue. Piercy has been a little feisty this episode. I will, I will say that. He turns to face the statue. Uh... Okay, uh, <laughs> one tree hill. <laughs> one tree hill. <laughs> I I regret uh, leaving the king. He's he, he's a suffering. And I wish I was there to help him and and to save him my family. But I didn't, and I'm here, and, and we've done other things, and I guess it's okay. But uh, I can't I can't save the lives that uh, were, were lost in the Mirsko. I have to live with that. I have to constantly uh, worry about my king. I should be by his side, and I'm here. But these... Yeah, people. And he just kind of just looks at the statue, and just like. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you happy? <laughs> there, particularly at the mention of your family, uh, you wish you could have protected. Uh, you see a placard flashes momentarily and catches your eye. Which one catches your eye? The... I believe it was the center one. Mm -hmm. with the, the, Defying the Kings. Defying the kings. All right. The same text is there, and you uh, pass on through. You see Piercy go through a solid wall. Three heroes are gone. Three heroes are within this room. Xander steps up to uh, Montreal. I always wanted to do rights. I always thought I could do rights. Use my magic for something good. And one of the greatest things I could thought I could possibly ever do was give that knowledge to someone else. To train someone in how to use it and what to do with it because it was such a struggle for me for so long. And I really tried. I really wanted to be a great teacher. But I failed Yelena. I, I let her down and... I let her die. And I'm still torn about it because there was reasons that it, it happened, but it still felt like a failure on my end the whole time. And right before that happens, I found out that I couldn't even defend my Edlin home, which is where I started in the first place. And my father was killed. And I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to say goodbye to him. Certainly didn't tell my mother, who I just found out that he's gone. I defied the king because I was so certain that I was right. And that was a part of where I lost the faith from Yelena in the process. I, gave, I think that's what I regret the most, is the certainty of what I thought I could do without actually checking first or, at, or guessing who it could hurt. A placard flashes momentarily and catches your eye. Which one is it, Xander? The Devourer. Text appears on it, and it reads, The Trinal empowered great magic to the bravest warrior, Scordranar. With this power, he alone was able to send the Northern Queen to a frozen prison. You don't have to write this down. And the wall fades. Placard remains. 
I'm seeing a different placard, you guys. Hope to see you on the other side. Xander walks through. Not before you get a kiss on the cheek. All right, you get a kiss. You don't have to duck under the placard, and Xander <laughs> walks through a wall, <laughs> leaving two heroes behind. Well, Bolly, it's you and me again on our own. Should we beat feet and get the hell out of here? <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. You mind if I go next? Or, please or, do. Please do. Uh, Bleak reluctantly approaches. She gets down uh, on her knees and um, thinking about things. She uh, first. Would you like some privacy? No, it's all right. Right. I got nothing to hide from you. Um, a vision of uh, her mother appears. Uh a vision of her mother right before her mother was murdered appears and um Pleek's heart gets full and empty at the same time I wish you could see me now I think you'd be proud of me you'd probably disapprove of a, a, a couple things but I wish you, I wish you were here. I wish things didn't end the way they ended for you. I wish you could be here to meet my friends. To meet Xanner. You would like him a lot. You would approve of him. I wish I did something different for it to not end up like it did and um and then another vision appears of Xanner and um it's when the group left Yelena Yelena's in the vision too but she's in the background fuzzy way out of focus okay <laughs> uh when we left the Xanner and Yelena uh, to take care of that sphere in the Thousand Isles. And, um... The feeling she had when she left Xanner at that point was was great. And it weighed heavy on her. And, um... She never thought she was going to see him again at that point. She was certainly, she was certain she was, she, her and the rest of the group were walking away, never to see, to see Xander again. And, um, she says this out loud and, um, is very thankful that she, he, he did come back to her. And, um, she stands. All right. As you stand, Polik, another placard flashes and catches your eye. Which one is it? The Great Scourge. The Great Scourge to the right. <clears throat> Some text appears. More text than the others. The kings turn to the Trinal once again for help, this time to slay their hero, Scourgenar. The Trinal summoned a powerful being to defeat Scourgenar, but this being turned on the world and unleashed the dead. The magic causing the Great Scourge did not destroy Scourgenar, as the history books read, but rather the cataclysmic magic guided him to this being of death and to Scourgenar's final secret, a secret we are shamed to still hide. And the wall fades. And you go through. Yep. Palik walks through a solid-looking wall to your eyes, Bali, and you are all alone within this chamber. Lock. Yeah, lock. <laughs> lock Level two. Away. <laughs> Level two, bitches! <laughs> Bali's just checking things out. <laughs> Uh, but uh, he walks over to the Great Scourge mm -hmm. and puts his hand upon it. Okay. And then attempts to uh, meld stone. Okay. 
You are able to meld through the stone and get through without <laughs> doing anything that everyone else did. Dick. <laughs> Some great. But, and he, he's, he leaves with this. My burdens are my own, and they all have gone before me. And he walks. All right. So great role playing, everyone, but Bali gain a hero point, please. <laughs> <laughs> that will transfer over. Wait, and everyone got a everyone got a hero point, but Bali. Yes. Okay. Yes. So for being a punk. And Correct. Okay. For taking the Ace Ventura out the ass. Yes. <laughs> and uh, all of you find yourselves looking at one another in a same corridor. Oh. With tears and hugs. And <laughs> oh, I feel so much better. And Bali, like, get out of my way. <laughs> as you, nothing. As you make your way down this corridor towards the final chamber of this spot within the three faces here uh, in northern Navarre. It is three days ago. It is miles away under the canopy of the elven uh, kingdom of Ethlien at the top of the eighth tower of Skordrenar. Our heroes are there. The spirit makes a loud call out. May Lomtrail watch over you. Your fate is the fate of all. And a wind kicks up, and then it quickly flies over to Yaru really fast, leans into Yaru's ear, and whispers, Skordrenar moves to take this world, but the hero inside of him seeks something else. Another soul to take the powers of the silent fate and replace him. To sleep and leave this world alone for a thousand years just like he did for the last silent fate oh so long ago. And we will stop there for tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this ended really cool. This was really fun. And I've got so many things I want to talk about with them in the after show. Um, again, catch us on our website. Come join the discussion on our Discord server as well. You can find everything at ingloriousbards.com. And we will see you next time. Good night, everyone. Bye. Good night.